It's a happy Sunday, a very happy afternoon uh, where we are here in Kawe. Very bright indeed in terms of uh, the sunlight and of course uh, we expect to have a very, very beautiful game here at uh, Godfrey Stalo Stadium uh, in uh, Kawe. And of course the host team that is Kawe Warriors will be taking on uh, league leaders of the table, 32 points, that is the Lusaka Tigers. And they always say a clash of this one is the grass that suffers because two teams are neck on neck in terms of standing on the table. So I want to see at the end of 90 minutes which of the two teams will be actually going back home smiling. Will it be the home team that is Kyle Warriors or will it be the visiting team that is Lusaka Tigers? Thank you so much for joining us on the channel of choice uh, movie families wherever you could be across uh, Zambia in Kasama in Western province in Southern province in Eastern province wherever you could be thank you so much for joining us at uh, the game that we are showing you live uh, this afternoon on your channel of choice that is uh, Kawa Warriors taking on Lusaka Tigers and George Peary is with me George, we're just discussing about the two teams. A lot of a lot of talk has gone around saying uh, Lusaka Tigers are on top of the table, obviously for a very big reason, and they'll be taking on uh, this team here, Kamo Waders. At the end of 90 minutes, do we expect any changes in terms of standing on the table? Obviously, whichever way this results will, will, will go, I believe there will be changes in terms of the table. Maybe a draw, a barren draw, will make things remain the way they are. But as, as, as things stand at the moment, only a, only a goal separates these two sides. They have scored almost the same number of goals. Just that Lusaka Tigers uh, have got you know, enough goals than uh, you know, uh, a team like our Warriors, which is only a goal that is separating them. So obviously, the, this particular pitch will definitely you know, um, uh, come to see action that is very much scintillating, the action that the fans will be looking forward to because these two teams are playing indeed good football, no doubt about it. They have never found themselves to be where they are today by fruit. It's because of the way they, you know, they are playing. Both the coaches that have tried their level boss to put in, you know, in place things you know, to ensure that the teams you know, uh, fight very hard. Ever since Sam Piri took charge of the team, that's Matero Tigers, they have been you know, a team to watch and they're a team to beat. So is the case with Muhammad Fatih. They are playing good football with a couple of you know, Congolese on both sides, uh, which is Lusaka Tigers, who have got some Congolese, as well as two Congolese from you know, the Kauria side in Adris Mbombo, as well as Marcel Kalonda. What do you think George could be going on in the mind of uh, this coach, Mohamed Fati, realizing that he knows that his team is just second on the table, 32 points, and there's only a good difference separating the two sides. What do you think is going on in his mind is fact, is the fact that he is playing at home and this game is hugely, hugely important considering what is coming ahead of them the next two weeks? I had a, a chart, we know, with Fati before he could play his game against Matelo United and he was hoping to beat Matelo United so that he can extend, you know, the gap between the two teams. But believe you me, it wasn't the case. Matelo United proved to be, you know, a hard nut to crack. So this definitely going through this, you know, game, he can't allow his team to lose two games in a row. So obviously, he's going to give, you know, tell his boys that, guys, we have never lost at home, might have lost against, you know, among medics, but this time around, we have to put our house in order and bounce back to victories. They can't allow themselves to lose two games in a row so obviously that makes this particular game to be very much interesting and to see interesting football this time around. But whenever such teams are, are, you know, are playing, I'm on one scared of one thing. You never expect many goals because they're both teams that can be tactically you know, cautious going forward and uh, you know, defending. Last weekend, uh, this team, uh, Kawa Warriors, uh, lost to Matelo United by a goal to New at, in, at the Independent Stadium. Now, going into this game, do you think that they've recovered from that loss? The fact that they're meeting a team that actually is coming from a victory against Life Women, that is last weekend. So do we see that Kawa Warriors have erased those, uh, you know, you know uh, that bad result or that, that, that uh, result that happened last weekend against Matelo United? Obviously, when big teams lose, they have to go back to the drawing board, but they never had so much time. It's only, you know, between six to five days, so to say, for them to recover cover and do everything. But as things stand, team, as you have asked, obviously they have put their house in order. They know where they went wrong. And to me, if you ask me, that particular game that they lost to Matero United, it was all goes back to the lack of conversion of chances. A couple, one of them was Idris Mbombo, who had a couple of chances, about six of them, of which he was supposed to hit the back of the net, but he failed. Hopefully this time around, he'll be sharp enough and accurate enough to hit the back of the net and put, you know, a team like Kaorias in front in terms of, you know, goal scoring. But otherwise, he was a the culprit in the game they played against Matero United, they were a better side, but if you don't take your chances, you get to be punished, and they were the victims, you know, in, at Independence Stadium. Lusaka Tigers, George, have played about seven games away from home, and they've only lost the four games, they've drawn, sorry, they've lost the two games, they've drawn one, and they've won four games. Now, with that picture in mind, do we see Kabe Waders here getting so easy at the hands of Lusaka Tigers? 
Well, they might not get it easy because, as I've said, team, the team like the Saka Tigers that are on top of the table, they haven't found themselves to be where they are today by fruit. It's because they are playing good football. They haven't just found themselves where they are. It's because of the football they play, which is very good. And uh, that makes this fixture to be very much interesting. They're tactically disciplined. It's a team that can score goals. That's why they only, they're only topping the table at the moment by a, you know, a good difference. So it'll be very much interesting game to look forward to. And it won't be an easy encounter for Kawari knowing that both teams are a team that are fighting for promotion come next season. Above all, there's another thing that is at stake. That's playing Barclays Cup. The team that will be topping, obviously, will go on and to play Barclays Cup uh, come, you know, um, the midweek of uh, the, the, the midweek table, the midweek of the table. Right, so the two teams that are crashing this afternoon, they are neck on neck in terms of standing on the table. We're talking about Lusaka Tigers are leading the pack by 32 points, followed by Kawadas also at 32 points. But the only difference is the goals that put Lusaka Tigers on top of the table. So after 90 minutes, obviously, we expect a lot of drama indeed to come out of this particular stadium because Kawadas are geared for this game. So is Lusaka Tigers. But I can simply tell you that keep on tuning on to Movie TV and of course stay glued to your television wherever you could be because we're expecting, anticipating a lot of drama coming live here at Godfrey Shell Stadium in Kabwe. And of course, they'll be leaving you for the next 45 minutes just to see how the two teams will size each other in the first 45 minutes. So, from Godfrey Shell Stadium, my name is Tim Zulu and enjoy watching Division 1 football live on your channel of choice. A warm welcome to the Yuka Godfrey Chitalu 107 Stadium. Here in Kabwe, top of the bill, clash between league leaders Lusaka Tigers and magnificent people's team Kabo Warriors here at their home ground. Like Tim Zulu, boy from Petauke, deep in the village, conversing there with George Ochao Piri Jr. This is a very tight, very tough, very competitive game we expect here it's a week 15 march it is dixon chanda Mapes league leaders lusaka tigers attempting to bite muhammad fatis cabo warriors this is the voice of the google search of zambian football joining me or should i say i am joining chizengu lukama the international football consultant for this one given that last weekend I was not in the commentary box due to other commitments. Chizengu. Wow, thank you very much, um, Son, and it's always uh, a pleasure to have you back on the, on the booth. I think uh, things always have to get back to where they, they belong. And uh, I must say condolences, of course, for the loss of your, your uncle. But of course, uh, the good news is you had to get back to normal life and uh, continue. Good to have you here at uh, Godfrey Yuka Chitalo Stadium. Thank you very much, Chizengu. As we can see, the crowd beginning to swell here at the Yuka Godfrey Chitalu 107 Stadium. Previously, it was called the Railways Ground until it was renamed the Yuka Godfrey Chitalu 107 Stadium after the golden boy of Zambian football. And many of the fans here are expecting Cabo Warriors to put on a show, Chizengu. Having been defeated last weekend, they are only second on the table just by a goal. They have pumped in 21 goals. They have conceded six goals. While the Lusaka Tigers have put in 22 goals and they have conceded eight goals. So only a goal separating these two sides, Chizengu. Dixon Chandamwapa, I went to the same school with him. He's got a lot of pedigree, played, you know, for the Zambia national soccer team. Went to Belgium for six months at uh, Jamino Ereken and then came back. He was sold to... Zanako for 8 million kwacha way back in 2000, then later on played at Petro Atletico alongside former Zambia national soccer team captain Elijah Tana. He is now coming here to the Godfrey Yukachitalu Stadium where he is his father, Mr. Seferino Chanda, is a former goalkeeper here. What a game, Chizengu, and I I'm wondering what could be going through the mind of uh, you know Chanda Senior, Mr. Seferino Chanda, as he's sitting in front of his television today. On whose side will he be? Will he be thinking of Cabo Warriors, where he played as a goalkeeper, or he will be thinking of his son? And by the way, not just his son, 
His grandson is also in the team. We'll give you the team news a little later. And of course, his other son, as we see the two teams coming, you know, out of the tunnels for this huge Division One South match. This is the biggest game in Zambia today because it's the first again a second, not even in the Super Division Chizengu. Well, of course, like you rightly put it, these two teams are separated by a goal difference. A goal difference, Imsonda. It just shows how close a goal it is. But of course, uh, looking at Kawa Warriors, this is a game that we also uh, broadcasted live uh, last week when they came up against uh, Matera United. This is a side that comes in the same, which is uh, situated in the same city as uh, Lusaka Tigers. But of course, they are not sister clubs. Uh, Matera United, I think, did pull a surprise by beating Kawa Warriors to a tune of one go to new. I think it was a Warriors team that really never came um, uh, to the party. They didn't utilize the chances that. Uh, they had this Idris Mbombo, the culprit of that day. But of course, uh, a, 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 a few days Muta, the goalkeeper. Uh, uh, Lusaka Tigers will be looking forward to make sure that he keeps a clean sheet against this guy. So a huge encounter like you rightly put it and a very very important game for the both sides that come up this afternoon. Like Tim Zulu said on the touchline with George Peary Jr. that the grass is the one that is really going to suffer and indeed we'll see how to what extent the grass is going to suffer. And the two captains there uh... Lusaka Tigers in the bright orange jersey just lining up with the referees, exchanging pleasantries and of course trying to get the photos before the start of this huge Division 1 South match. And the man in the center there is Mutumba Hendricks. He is 39 years of age. He is from Lusaka. He's the teacher, the man who will be in control of things. That's the match referee, Hendricks Mutumba, 39 years of age. He is a Lusaka teacher and he will be assisted by Moesa Roy from Kapirin Porsche, not too far away from here. 45 minutes or so away from here of course as the first assistant referee and the second assistant referee is love more you know jeffrey from jerry rather from chilanga is also a police officer he's the police officer so there are two teachers first assistant referee moesa roy is a capirin porsche teacher and of course the referee is the teacher and the assistant referee that's uh love more jerry from chilanga is a policeman so we are in very capable hands there muhammad fati in your picture you know, with the Cabo Warriors official talking to the referee, um, probably exchanging one or two things over the proceedings. Not very sure what it is all about, but in the bright orange jerseys, that's Lusaka Tigers. They were formed in 1954. They were called Matero O Blacks. Remember, before Zambia got independent, they got players mostly from Matero. And then in 1964, 1965, somewhere thereabouts, they changed to Matero Tigers. Then in 1969, they became Lusaka Tigers because now they began to get players from all over the country. Cabo Warriors in their all blue, looking very, very smart indeed. It's their home strip, and uh, they have only been defeated once this particular season, and that defeat came about two or three weeks ago at the hands of Mumbra Medics. Wow, Mumbra Medics, I think they pulled a surprise uh, result here at uh, the Godfrey Yuka Chitalu uh, Stadium. Moza. I think it was widely unexpected, of course, on paper, that Kawa Warriors could actually uh, bow down to Mumbra Medics. And uh, this is a Mumbra... This is a Mumbwa Medics uh, 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 side that has actually been languishing in Division 1 football for a very, very long time. So in terms of pedigree, it was quite disappointing, rather, for, for Kabo Warriors to have actually uh, succumbed to that loss uh, against uh, Kabwe, I mean, uh, Mumbwa Medics. Very quickly, the team sheets for the visiting side first, who will kick us off first here. Few days, Muya in goal. Matthews, Sichon, Ngoi, Brian Chanda, Zakeo Muzala, Congolese. Boyd Chanda Mulenga, he is, uh, yes, Boyd Chanda Mulenga, Frank Kaluba, Emmanuel Kabasa, their captain, Remy Tembo, Malela Sapu, nine goals, is their leading scorer, is another Congolese, and Stephen Chivesa Chanda, the son to Dixon Chanda Mwape, the coach for Lusaka Tigers, is completing their lineup. He's only 17 years of age. Cabo Warriors do have William Chivale in goal, Levi Zulu, Dick Nguemia Jr., Momba, Chilimba. And already there's go mouth action there. The goalkeeper comes out and he appears to be injured. And the referee has decided to stop play. But very quick start by Cabo Warriors. I was giving you their starting 11. Monga Chilimba is partnering the ever impressive Masai Kalonda at the heart of Muhammad Ifati's side. Martin Daka retains here from the last time that we came. He is the son-in-law to, to 
to Yuka Godfrey Chitalu Chizengu, Martin Daka. He's married to one of Yuka Godfrey Chitalu's daughters. Then they have Paul Simpemba, Zambia International, Siloni Jere, Ageless, although he says 32 years of age, Idris Simbombo, their leading scorer, Cabo Warriors, Lamek Kafoya, and Mwansan Sofwa, another junior international, completing they are 11. On the touchline, Lawrence Mulenga, under 20 international goalkeeper, Jacob Piri, Abut Sakala, Godfrey Nguenya. Here, he was tipped for big things, Chizengu, if you remember, in the air terrorizing stars, is on the bench today. Zambia International, Solomon Sakala on the bench. Ben Chengo, played in Mozambique, is also on the bench. As you see in your picture there, Muhammad Fati and uh, a few other, you know, um, of course, they, there's an injury. There's an injury and the goalkeeper still being attended to so we can go through with the team sheets. Panji Sikanyika completes their 11. They do welcome back Chintu Kampamba from duty, national duty. Yesterday he was with the Zambia national soccer team that failed to pierce Guinea-Bissau 0-0 at Estadio de la Levy in Dola. He is back today on the touchline. That's Muhammad, I mean Chintu Kampamba assisting Muhammad Fati alongside Happy Sichikolo. Then, like we said earlier, Dixon Chandamwape not on the touchline today because of the red card that he got uh, last weekend. And, and in his place, there's uh, Kusio Akufuna, his assistant, and then Kelvin Kalila, formerly of Zanako, also a former player of Lusaka Tigers, on the touchline. And then there's also another Chanda, the team physio, is the brother to Dixon Chandamwape. And by the way, Four of them, when I used to play with Dixon Chandamap at Matero Boys, used to play for Lusaka Tigers. Two of them are deceased, may they are so rest in peace. But two of them are here today. The head coach for Lusaka Tigers, Dixon Chandamap, and his brother, the team physio, Chandam Sonda as well. Well, uh, beautiful history, of course, there, um, Musonda. I tend to wonder, is it a family tree affair? <laughs> well, absolutely, it could be, given that uh, there are two, you know, related players on this pitch today. Of course, you know, the, the youngster, the coach's son, and then also the defender um, also is related to the coach. He's his nephew, actually. So you do have four chanders involved in this particular game. That's uh, Funda Singoi, is a nephew to the head coach, Dixon Chandamape. And then, of course, his cousin, Stephen Chivesa, also is in there. As Cabo Warriors break now with Idris Mbombo deep inside Tiger's own area. They'll love to control Mbombo and his... And it's a penalty! Unbelievable! Is it Chisangu? <laughs> drama, drama here! Drama so early, Drama so early. You see, this is a situation that I saw again yesterday in the game that uh, Zambia played against Bin, uh, Guinea Bissau when uh, Patson Daka was uh, just of, um, uh, been brought down in the in the 18 yard box. Uh, the referee pointed on the penalty spot and then quickly changed and pointed to the corner flag, indicating that it was a corner. The same has happened here. I saw the referee, I think, pointing on the penalty spot and then quickly changing direction, indicating that it's a goal kick. So really, referees have to be, uh, in terms of decision making, they really have to be a little bit quick and uh, are precise. Remy Tembo has been fouled inside the center circle. Again, very, very surprising. The referee, Hendrix Mutumba, decided earlier that it was going to be a penalty, but changed very quickly, maybe assisted by Lovemore, Jerry, who might have felt that there was no touch on Idris Simbombo by uh, Brian Chanda. He will be very relieved you know, defender Brian, because of very thin margins there, it could have easily been a penalty to the home side Cabo Warriors. And that's the goalkeeper, few days Muya, who had been injured a while ago, but is, is very fine now. Dick Nguenya was contending for that particular ball far away from here, but it's a Tigers throw in. Tempo turning and shooting, easy pickings. For William Chivale is a vastly experienced goalkeeper. William Chivale is not going to be troubled by such a shot. Yeah, experienced indeed, um, Son. I think this is a, a guy that has played for quite a number of um, clubs in Zambia, and uh, I don't think he can be easily be scared. I think we've seen even the way Warriors has actually been playing uh, this season. I think he's been fantastic between the sticks. Tigers come away with it in the bright orange shirt. Shooting in the southern direction. That is the right side on your picture. Chilimba clears. Lame Kafoya involved. 
Simpemba interchanging passes. This is Lameka Fire, the number 25. Confidently, but intercepted by Tigers at the expense of giving away a throw. Kabo Warriors seem to have started this game like a house on fire, Chizengu, trying to please the home, the home crowd. Yeah, of course, uh, coming from that, um, coming at the back of the loss, I think last week, I think Coach Muhammad Fati did actually uh, indicate to his players to say we need to start in gear five so that we can quickly uh, score a goal and probably unsettle Lusaka Tigers. Lamek Kafaya there and the goalkeeper a few days Muya had to push the ball over the bar. Some very quick movement. Again, we are seeing those long throws from the Congolese ever impressive centre back. That's uh, Masse Kalonda. It is one of those long throw-ins that caused trouble on that particular occasion. Chisengu. Yeah, indeed, uh, very, very uh, good when it comes to those long uh, uh, throw-ins. I think it reminds me of uh, uh, one of the former internationals, of course, Modon Babo Malitoli. When it comes to when it came to long throw-ins, I think he was equal to the task. The same can be said about uh, Masse Kalonda. Like I said, they've started in Gear Five, Muzo, trying to quickly get that um, needed goal in the early stages of the game, so as to unsettle. Lusaka Tigers. So far, Lusaka Tigers are chasing their own shadows. Marcel Kalonda on the ball, trying to get crosses the ball brilliantly. A few days, Muya, there's a foul there on the goalkeeper. Marcel Kalonda, again, what a cross in the area. These are the things that you need to see from a defender. I was trying to be on the lookout yesterday when Zambia was playing against, against Guinea Bissau. I didn't see Emmanuel Mbola cross at any given time, tellingly in the area like that by this Congolese. He's a centre-back, but he's all over. He's, he's got those long throw-ins. He's a good reader of the game. And a very stable centre-back, Marseille Kalonda, already showing his qualities. Well, for Mbola, not only in this game, Musonda, that we've not seen him uh, cross a single, a, a, make a single cross, obviously, in the, in the box of the opponents. I think ever since he started playing for the national team, I've never seen him a, a service, what we call servicing your wing, servicing the, the strikers. I think in modern football, you allow um, uh, defenders, of course, when they overlap, and they're the ones that um, uh, 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 put in those uh, crosses. The same can be said about uh, uh, probably Marcelo from Real Madrid. I think he's actually serviced in many occasions that is actually crossed and uh, maybe Benzema is caught or, or, or probably Cristiano Ronaldo and puts the ball, buries the ball behind the back of the net. But An inquest there at Chizengu by four Cabo Warriors players, Idris Simbombo, the Congolese, and that's the Lusaka Tigers coach, Kusio Akufuna, the assistant coach, stepping in for the suspended Dixon Chanda Mwape and their thumbs up in the yellow jersey. Looking like South Africa, the, the technical bench for Lusaka Tigers. Exactly. And by the way, Sam Piri, <laughs> the accountant who delivered that letter to <laughs> to honor Janza of dismissal at the airport. He is here today at the Godfrey Yukachitalu Stadium and I was jokingly saying, I hope you are not delivering a dismissal letter to me here from movie television. <laughs> Very comical indeed, uh, Msonda. They had to make sure that the letter is quickly delivered at Kenneth Kaunda Inter uh, International Airport just to inst uh, intercept Ona Janza so that he doesn't um, proceed with the team uh, to Ndola. But of course, in football, a lot do happen. And um, uh, uh, it, for me, it was a comedy of errors. Of course, uh, I thought Janza being technical director at the Football Association of Zambia, he's got an office and maybe the letter should have been delivered to his office. The technical bench, I mean the substitute bench, of Lusaka Tigers, the bright orange shirts. Again, they have, you know, on their bench, Patrick Mbai, the one with the fancy hairstyle. He is a Congolese as well. They have Mike Banda, Oswald Muntali, Emmanuel Nondo, and Moses Mwanza. Completing their bench is Alinas Milanzi. No relationship to the famous Harry Milanzi. The goalkeeper, Muya, few days Muya, seemingly feeling fine now. And uh, the team physio, Msonda Chama, will have to leave the pitch so that play could resume. Like I said, the team physio, Msonda Chama, is actually the, um, now they are indicating, the team physio should have been the one to indicate that uh, they needed to substitute. But uh, it looks like the defender indicating that they, there's going to be substitution. And uh, the first assistant referee there, Roy Mwesa, just indicating to the referee Mutumba Hendricks that uh, Lusaka Tigers will have to make a substitution. It appears that the goalkeeper, Tigers goalkeeper, Fudes Muya, is not feeling fine and uh, he will have to be replaced in this particular game, which is a very, very sad state of affairs. They are the goalkeeper you see with uh, Musonda Chanda, the 
Team Physio for Lusaka Tigers, of course, the brother to Dixon Chandamape, the head coach of Lusaka Tigers. Well, I'm sorry, I was coming, uh, I was um, almost coming to that aspect. I said uh, the goalkeeper twice has been seriously injured. Is he, is he going to be able to, to continue? But of course, uh, before I could actually come in on that aspect, uh, a substitution is being made and the goalkeeper is um, uh, uh, coming out. Of course, now we see the substitutes uh, goalkeeper coming in now. These are some of the situations that are very, very tense, um, Musonda. You know, coming in for the first choice uh, goalkeeper, you really have to prove that um, uh, uh, you can actually be equal to the task. And looking at the magnitude of the game, this is a game that looks win at all costs because this is a battle of uh, first position in Division 1 um, uh, 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 South, uh, Musonda. Emmanuel Nondo, the number 20, is a substitute goalkeeper who has come on for a few days, Muya, who can't continue after those repeated injuries. Martin Daka does a beauty, deep inside Cabo Warriors on area, floating it inside Tigers, but stopped. Now, so far, can he unleash? It's the first test of action by the substitute goalkeeper, few days more at his end. Yeah, first uh, action, of course, and uh, he seems to be, have been um, uh, comfortable on the ball. But, of course, another thing, um, uh, Cabo Warriors, the way they are coming, they are coming with a lot of um, uh, uh, firepower. They, they are playing with two strikers up front, and at a given time, they seem to be giving um, uh, problems to Lusaka, Dynam, uh, sorry, Lusaka uh, Tigers. And at the moment, Lusaka Tigers have not yet come to the party. As you can see, it's very difficult for them to play uh, coordinated football. They've not yet um, uh, uh, settled, and they, the better they settle quickly so that um, uh, they get can be uh, uh, up and running for them, but as it is, it's all Warriors guns blazing. Monga Chilimba. Cabo Warriors. Tigers back to the center, like ping pong, the game of tennis or badminton or table tennis. Where you just push the ball from one half to the other. Muhammad Fati already very active, up on his feet, backing instructions, the Egyptian, vastly experienced coach, he's coached in Zimbabwe, he's coached at under 17 level in Egypt, he's been involved in the Egyptian women's national soccer team. The Warriors pushing forward with Sofwa, but the offside flag was up on that particular occasion, was it handball Chizeng? Yeah, it was a handball, uh, just like we said. They are, they've got a lot of pace going uh, uh, up front. They are really in a hurry to make sure that they score in the early stages of, uh, of this game. Hence, you can see uh, up front, they seem to be uh, panicking, not, not knowing who is actually responsible of that um, a, 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 a particular ball at that time. It's like two players wanted to grab one ball at, uh, at a given time. Hopefully, they have not been disturbed psychologically after that substitution of their goalkeeper, few days Muya. Just after 10 minutes, that substitution, sometimes injuries can destabilize you, but uh, so far it's Warriors that have started very well. Dick Nguenya, Paul Simpemba, to Dick Nguenya, to Simpemba, exchanging passes. It's a foul on ground level, no, tack on ground level rather, getting it away, swept away by Marseille. Cleared by Matthew Sichone. But Warriors bring it back again into the Tigers area. Simpemba is seen much of the ball and they are floating it inside the area. Lame Kafuaya pursuing but uh, into touch for a goal kick. Chizem. Yeah, I think uh, so far so good uh, for Kawa Warriors. But of course, uh, it's important, like I earlier mentioned, for Lusaka Tigers to quickly settle in this match. But as it as it can be seen, it's 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 back to the center, like you rightly put it. Ping pong. The moment that Warriors loses possession, they don't seem to 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 play coordinated football. This Lusaka Tiger side and. Um, there they are again, another long ball, obviously to, to nobody. So really, Lusaka Tigers, they have to play coordinated football. It's high time that they, they showed the type of system that they're actually uh, playing. So far, it's difficult to tell what system uh, Lusaka Tigers is actually uh, 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 playing. But of course, for Warriors, they keep on pushing forward. They keep on pushing forward. They really, really want to get that goal as early as uh, uh, possible, um, Sonda. And uh, stretching there couple Warriors players stretching on the touchline because there's a Warriors player that is injured. Panji Sikanyika there in your picture earlier on stretching with Ben Chengo. It looks like the Congolese Idris 
Bombo, is it or is it Maseka Londa? We are not able to tell from where we, we are. It's Idris in Bombo. Yes, correct, Chizengu. Again, a bit of uh, you know fouls here and there. Happy Sichikolo Bauchi, they call him here. Former Zambia right back defender is now assistant coach. One of the two assistant coaches to Muhammad Fati, Bauchi, Sichikolo. <laughs> Very worried. If they lose. <laughs> their top striker is their leading striker, isn't he, Idris Mbombo? Yeah, he How is. could that affect the game? And they are pensive looking, Bauchi, just wondering what has hit them on the injury front. Yeah, it could be a big blow for Kawa Warriors because this is a player that possesses a lot of qualities, uh, uh, Sonda. More especially the, the physical presence. I think defenders tend to, uh, to, he, to feel his weight when he's, um, when he's on the ball. And it's very, very difficult to keep him out of the, uh, the goal because of his physical ability. And of course, he's a, he's a top scorer for Kawa Warriors. And it just shows that uh, this is a guy that has got a heart for uh, 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 netting in goals at a given uh, situation. Sorry, Chizengu. But Diki Ngwenya there was lining it up together with uh, Martin Daka. Martin Daka, of course, will feel very special here. Formerly of Zanako, formerly of Unchanga Rangers, Martin Daka, formerly of Concola Blades. He also played in Angola, former Zambia under 20 uh, midfielder who is married to Yuka Godfrey Chitalu's daughters. Warriors now attack, looking for Lamek Kafuaya, but the defender is quick to arrive, and that ball will zoom out into touch for a corner. Chisen. Yeah, uh, slowly, slowly, Lusaka Tigers seem to be coming into the, into the game. But I think they really have to up their tempo. So far, so good for Kawa Warriors. They continue pushing. And the goodness with football moves, the more you push, the more chances are created. But if you don't bury those chances, I can tell you, even a team that you dominated possession for 90 a, a, a percent can actually come back and haunt you. Chances, if are not taken, they do come back and haunt you. Duke Nguanya with a low shot, headed from the area, only at the expense of giving away a throw to Cabo Warriors. They have literally camped Chizengu in this Lusaka Tigers area. The Warriors caging the Tigers in their own area. Quickly taken, <laughs> Siloni Jerry, 32 years of age, formerly of Prison Leopards, is controlling the midfield quite well. No wonder we are not seeing them Tigers coming out of their cage so far. Momba Chilimba heads. Jere. Far away from here. Mwenya crosses. Over the bar. Good chance there. Idris Simbombo should have taken advantage of that. Chizengu. That's Great a cross by Dick Nguenya, but a Mbombo putting the ball over the bar. That's how dangerous he can be, uh, Musonda, given a, a chance. But I think he mustn't waste so many chances. If you, the last weekend when they played Material United, he did quite um, uh, uh, waste a lot of chances. He had about eight clear chances, um, if my memory serves me right. He never buried any of those. And subsequently, in the latter stages of the game, he became frustrated and he earned himself a yellow card. Levi Zulu was trying to get the ball off Mbimba, who went on the ground, but the referee was having none of it, cleared by Momba, Chilimba. But no fluency whatsoever so far, with about 19 minutes gone in this first half. Top of the pile, if you like, fixture. It is the cream de la cream fixture in the Zambia Division 1 South. Magnificent Cabo Warriors now on the attack. Kafuaya looking for Mbombo, but headed by Tigers. And it's going to be a foul, the referee, Mutumba, says. It was a bad lifting of the leg there by a Tigers player. Yeah, bad lifting of the leg, of course, there. And it's a, it's a free kick that has been given in a very, very dangerous uh, uh, position. I think I remember those days you could see Martin Daka trying to take that because of uh, his ability of shooting from range. A long range. I hope he's the one who's going to take it. But of course, Warriors is a team that has got a lot of um, uh, fantastic players that can actually take free kicks from um, uh, long range. And it looks like it's Kafuaya who is going to take this one. We'll see what this one can result into. Lame Kafuaya on the ball. This is a stadium that has produced heroes. Yuka got Fritchitalu himself. Bonfest Simutowe. They all plied their trade here. In the later years, you had they clear the ball away. The likes of Timothy Mwitwa applied their trade here, made their name here, got free Kangwa. Specialists of some sort in terms of free kicks, but uh, Leighton Kafuaya there, Lamek rather, 
failing to emulate those greats who when there are dead ball situations like those they'll shake the back of the net but it's tigers now on the attack with uh shibe sachanda exchanging passes levi zulu clearing from the area but again momba chilimba heads tigers make amends far away from here on the left are they going to control duking when does well to Lamek Kafaya, the lanky number 25. Jere is beaten, but it's still Levi Zulu, the former Nchanga Rangers man, to Siloni Jere. Skipper, like a good wine, getting better with age, 32 years of age, the former prison Leopards midfielder. Towards Paul Simpemba. Dribbles the man and strays in the area, but uh, that particular occasion, Tigers recover very well. And they to roll to the goalkeeper, Nondo. They seem to be caged in their own half, the bright oranges of Matero. I thought it should have been the Tigers caging the Warriors, but uh, it's the other way around, where Warriors are caging uh, the Tigers, because I think a Tiger is the one that is more vicious, because it's hunted by a warrior. But uh, <laughs> that situation is not to be in this uh, particular uh, situation. Well, of course, there are w wily warriors who can tame a Tiger. Still a long way to go. We've only played about 22 minutes in this first half. But it's Cabo Warriors who look very well organized in terms of the way they are playing. Bombo does well, very strong, stays on his feet, far into the area. Matthews is shown it. Levi Zulu is going to unleash. No power in the short season. Yeah, but he has the ability to shoot from uh, long range. I think you remember when they played against the uh, city of Lusaka, he did pile up a bit of um, some shots on goal. He has the ability to shoot from uh, long range. He really trusts uh, his uh, left footer. So. Uh, not so not so convincing at that particular time, but uh, he is a very good um, uh, defender going up front. That's what those are the qualities that we we want. Um, Sonda talking about um, left uh, left or right uh, uh, backs. That's what is supposed to be done. When you are going up front, you need to be positive. But the same cannot be said about um, uh, um, Bola in the earlier instances when we were actually talking about um, him. Levi Zulu brilliantly to Lamek Kafaya. He controlled it, but uh, the referee Mutumba says. Is it offside? Yes, offside. The second assistant referee, that's uh, Lavmo Jere from Chilanga, the policeman, saying that uh, Lamek Kafaya was in an offside position when controlling that particular ball. Very interesting about uh, Levi Zulu. He wears just number two, yet he plays position number three. You expect him as the left footer. We've been very used in the past to have a number three Chizengu left position wearing jersey number three. But uh, when you're talking about those overlaps, it reminds me of the likes of Laban Chishala of old. The likes of Bernard II's hardware, Mutale, who would move with the ball. Even Bauchi himself, Happy Sichikol, and put in a cross in the area. That's what we expect. And the Duke Ngwanya is going to do just that. Into touch for a corner. What Muhammad Fatih has done very well with these Warriors, wing backs, if you like, like Louis Van Howe would like to call them at Manchester United, is to let the the full backs, they're no longer full backs, they're wing backs. They push, they bomb forward on, on the flanks. And you're seeing a lot of uh, the guy who is about to take the corner just now, Dickin Gwenya Jr. Of course, his father is the Nakambala head coach, suspended now. But uh, they are moving forward a lot. It's about, no, that's Martin Daka to take the corner now. It comes inside, headed by Mbombo. No, Monga Chilimba, but over the bar. Good boy in the area, but the connection, not there, Chizengu. 
Yeah, not there, of course. I think what is, what is lacking for Kawa Warriors is the precision up front. They are lacking that cutting edge up front. Of course, they are having a lot of uh, 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 play up front. They are winning a lot of balls in the middle of the park. But the final third, that is where it's a little bit uh, disappointing. Like I said, these chances that uh, they are failing to utilize, you never know. They can come and haunt them at the end of the day. The same was uh, the case when they played up against um, uh, Matero United. They had a lot of chances, but they could not any of those and eventually Matero United had one serious chance and they put the ball at the back of the net. The youngster Stephen Chilesa Chanda there fouled or was it Frank Kaluba the vice captain now the Congolese is fouled on that particular occasion by Cabo Warriors. As you have been saying Chizengu they have seen a lot of the ball Cabo Warriors they have had four corners so far haven't seen any corner for Osaka Tigers, you have to take advantage of those particular chances as we see Tigers taking a free kick inside their own area. And it is Zakeo Musala, another of those Congolese looking for Chivesa who has switched play on this right. But again, Cabo Warriors, Levi Zulu making sure just that safety first is attained on that particular occasion. Yeah, exactly. Safety first. I think those are one of um, the basic rules of a defender. When first is, uh, safety first is supposed to be first. And of course, um, Levi Zulu doing that on that uh, particular occasion. I mean, when you are in a situation where you are not sure of what uh, you need to do with a ball, you put it into safety so as to allow your friends to recover and then try and um, uh, have numbers at the back. And it's a throw. Matthew Sichone for the Saka Tigers, but headed by Momba Chilimba. Monga Chilimba, brother. Tikingwenya, far away from here. So again, Musaka Tigers are a bit disappointing today, Chizengu. Is it the absence of Dixon Chandamape on the um, bench that is affecting them? Maybe Muzo to a larger extent. You know, when you have your head coach seated on the, on the technical bench, there are, there are times when the head coach stands up and gives ins instructions to the players. There are times that the coach stands up and jacks up the players, gives them that motivation. But for, for Lusaka Tigers, I think that is what is also missing. When the coach is on the technical bench, he is able to stand up and probably change uh, 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 the tactical formation, depending on how things are going. I dress Mbombo, but too much. He was trying to look for Lame Kafaya, but straight into the palms of the goalkeeper, Emmanuel Nondo. And they will begin from the back. Tigers touched again. Hard work by Lame Kafaya, just make, making sure that the ball does not go back, you know, into, into their half. Hard working, which must please Muhammad Fati on the bench there. Matthew Sichone fails to go in between two Cabo Warriors men on that particular occasion. It was no Mansan so far. And, uh, the left back Levi Zulu, back to Matthews, Sichone, the interchange passes, driving the ball in the air, but Chivale picks it up, quickly throws it on the ground, that must have been an offside, offside decision against their leading scorer Malela Sapu, Malela Sapu was groomed by Don Bosco Chizengu before he came into Zambia. You know that Don Bosco was coached about a season or two ago by Fortson Kabole, the veteran, former Power Dynamos, former Nchanga Rangers, former Zambia National Soccer Team assistant coach, but uh, now back in Zambia. He was at uh, Ron United not too long ago, Fortson Kabole. But this boy, Sapu Malela, nine goals so far for Lusaka Tigers. He came from Don Bosco, which is the sister club to Tupiso Mazembe. Of course, Tupiso Mazembe has got a lot of Zambians there. They are called sometimes the Mazambians because of the presence of the Zambia skipper, Renford Kalaba, among a host of them, Zambians, Nathan Sinkala, Kabaso Chongo, given Singuluma, who yesterday failed to shine. Matthew Sichone has seen a lot of the ball. Sapu there again, Malela, groomed by Don Bosco, the sister club of uh, Tupiso Mazembe. Matthew Sichone was trying to find him. The number nine, bright, you know, orange shirts and uh, bandaged on both sides. I don't know what they call them. When we used to play Chimpomba, we called them Mpatishi. Mpatishi. She's saying, there is the Mpatishi man, but uh, <laughs> cleared by Monga. They have a chance for Saka Tigers to go one up there. Monga Chilimba clears the lines very, very dangerously there. Good chance for the Saka Tigers. And uh, 
real, real, real opening coming after 29 minutes in this particular game. And uh, George Ochao Zulu is giving us updates on the other matches. City of Lusaka, Boyd Muluanda side, or is it now Devin Ambala Musole there? They have beaten Lusaka City Council, coached by Kenneth Babo Malitoli. I heard you earlier say, Modern Babo Malitoli. It was the elder brother Chizengu who was called Babo. As we see the corner there, good strong hand by the goalkeeper Imano Chivale, who is appealing. Who is appealing that uh, there was a push up there on the defender and uh, who stays on the ground? Chizengu. Yeah, it's good that uh, Lusaka, uh, Lusaka Tigers are slowly coming into uh, uh, this game. I mean, uh, like I said, a lot of chances for Kawa Warriors, but them, they just had one and they almost buried it. Uh, the goalkeeper, uh, William Chivale, they are being uh, uh, beaten on the ground. They almost uh, buried that one. So it's good that uh, Tigers are slowly coming into the game which has to make it more interesting. They have to show that they're playing for something. They have to show that they deserve to be on top. And the only way they can show is by putting in positive play in this encounter. Cleared away from the danger zone. But there was a foul there, I think, on the goalkeeper. Did I say Emmanuel Chivale? Former Zambia International, now based in the US. The goalkeeper is William Chivale, like you rightly pointed out. Now, in your picture, he was Green shirt, black short, white socks, black boots. <laughs> William Chivale. <laughs> and, uh, and your goalkeeper at, Lusa at uh, Kalomo Jetas? <laughs> John Weir. No theatrics yet. But, and now Cabo Warriors control brilliantly again. Looking for Idris Mbombo, but intercepted and cleared from the danger zone by Tigers. Funda Singoi, the cousin of the coach, but... Uh, we saw in the picture there, Levi Zulu moving up like we've been saying brilliantly. Gafaya controls. And it's into touch for a throw. Very vigilant, Matthews, rather Funda Singoi, the nephew rather to the coach, Dixon Chanda Mwape. He's been very, very alert on this right side of the Lusaka Tigers defense, Chizen. Yeah, a family tree team. Um, <laughs> Musonda. But of course, he's been alert. I think uh, he's one of the Lusaka uh, uh, Tigers um, uh, uh, players that have come to the party. They've not uh, showed any signs of um, uh, downness since this game um, uh, actually uh, began. You can talk about uh, Matthews Ischone as well. I think he's been on the ball on quite um, uh, 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 a number of times uh, this afternoon. Because it is Matthews Ischone's area on the right side of the Lusaka Tigers defense that has been targeted, which is the left side of the Cabo Warriors, you know, attack. Bauchi, Happy Sichikolo shouting instructions there. It's not very chilly, but it's in a very, very hot court, isn't it, Chizen? Bauchi, yeah, indeed. Uh, a veteran in terms of coaching now, as well as uh, his uh, career days of uh, playing football. I think he was a fantastic um, uh, right back, like we said uh, earlier on. I remember him mostly when uh, Zambia played uh, Senegal, when we beat Senegal to a tune of four goals to new, when all of a sudden we saw a bees uh, invading Independence Stadium, and he was the victim that was actually stung by one of the bees, and he fell uh, to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Very sad incident there, but you can laugh about it today. And uh, on the boys, Frank Kaluba, the vice captain of the side, lining up a free kick inside the area with the number three, Stephen Chivesa Sachanda, the goalkeeper there, William Chivale, organizing his defense, trying to tell them, push to the right, push to the right. And uh, now, Tigers will attempt to shoot. Last number 11, Frank Kaluba. Is it going to let it to the youngster? He tries, but it goes away. His father, Dixon Chanda Mwape, used to be a left footer for excellence. Akufuna, very, very disappointed there with the youngster. 17 years of age, Stephen Chuesa Chanda, the son to the coach, failing to take advantage of that free kick situation. Maybe the, maybe the dad has not yet given him tips on how to take a free kicks but i'm sure with time he's actually going to improve i mean he's only 17 you said only 17 only years 17, of age so he's still got a lot of time uh, uh, to mature and probably start um, uh, doing things more positively on the pitch and his father is only 36 years of age i was laughing with him i said when did you get this child because my first born son chizengu is seven years of age and uh, <laughs> 
by that Dixon Chanda Mwape age is younger than me. <laughs> Equally the same with me. I'm younger than you, but my first born is eight. <laughs> <laughs> well, football age in Zambia. <laughs> I played with oh, Dixon Chanda Mwape at know, Matero Boys. I know he where, was my senior. I know where that is going now. I didn't realize. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> where we go, it is the Tigers on the attack. Maybe we should visit Vachateva Seferino Chanda one of these fine days to find out the real age for Dixon Chanda Mwape. Not to say that he has you know, lied on his age, but uh, I know that uh, the big man must be watching. The former Cabo Warriors you know, goalkeeper, the father to the coach of the Soccer Tigers, Mr. Seferino you know, Chanda, and the good carpenter, by the way. Um, in his heydays, Mr. Seferino Chanda, after he had quit his football. But uh, his son now, very, very good coach, played for Zambia between 2000 and 2003, Dixon Chanda Mape, worked under the German Yanni Brauer, if you remember, yeah. worked also under George Mungwa, Dixon Chanda Mape, worked also under the late Baboni, that's a Bonfest Simutowe. By the way, you know that Chanda Mape was actually groomed by Mofati Mutambo, the father to Nathan Sinkala and uh, um, and Andrew Sinkala? Oh, okay. That's Absolutely. Good. That's good news. And at Matero Boys, obviously, we had PJ Ngungu, who was our coach there. Now, Martin Daka, the son-in-law to Godfrey Yukachitalu, putting the ball in the right direction for Warriors. But Tigers have made amends, and they will come away with it now on this right crossing looking for straight away into the palms of the goalkeeper Chivale but again the goalkeeper has been beaten Bobo unbelievable Chizengu what a miss and unbelievable Msonda Chivulu those are boys those are type of situations that this boy Idris Mbombo easily buries at the back of the net what's the happening unbelievable Msonda he beat the goalkeeper who quickly the fans can't believe it they can't the goalkeeper <laughs> from the way he's pointing and look at look at what he says lift the game up lift because psychologically you can be affected if you miss a chance like that. And this is what you are telling me before the start of the game, that last weekend they missed a myriad of chances and Idris Mbombo was at the center, chief cow and Tigers, the goalkeeper comes out very quickly. Idris Mbombo was a chief culprit, missing eight clear-cut chances and today there, beating the substitute goalkeeper Emmanuel Nondo but just failing to put the icing on the cake, Shizem. Failing to put the icing on the cake, Msonda. It was a well-calculated move, a long ball from his countryman, Marcel Kalonda, found him on the right position, he beat the goalkeeper, was quickly off his line, and unfortunately... There's he commotion missed. there now, on the Lusaka Tigers bench, Shizengu, sorry to catch you. Police are to be called in. I'm not too sure what the fuss is all about. That's what the assistant coach who is standing in for Dixon Chandamape was red carded last week. That's Kusio Akufuna. He seems to be complaining to the referee. He's been sent off. Second game in a row. Has he been sent off? Kusio Akufuna, has he been sent off, Chizengu? Yeah, looks like uh, there's a lot of commotion on the on the touchline. Difficult to say what has actually been decided by the referee. You can see some fans there chanting, I think uh, trying to scream at the referee as well as um, the technical bench for Lusaka Tigers. Seems to be some problems there. The referee has stopped play and the fans are agitated. And there's a bit of an exchange there with the assistant, the first assistant referee, Mutumba. The first assistant referee, obviously he is a policeman and they will have to take charge of this particular situation just to restore calm here as the fans seemingly agitated for a reason which is very, very mysterious indeed. Oh, I'm sorry. And there, Muhammad Fati again in conversation with the referee Mutumba, trained to tell him to say, calm down. If you don't calm down, the Egyptian is being instructed, you will be sent off, and they say, seem to be saying, okay, it's fine. I think, Musonda, I understand uh, uh, the, the Kelvin, commotion. Kelvin Kalila there, the, the com assistant coach. The commotion, is, the commotion is coming as a result. Kelvin Kalila not sitting on the bench. I think if, you, if you've realized, since the game started, he's been kneeling on the touchline, he hasn't sat on the bench. So, obviously, 
the soccer fans now are trying to. But uh, who says who says the coach cannot be praying to God while yeah, the game is going on? Yeah, but of course. During the <laughs> Africa Cup of Nations, you saw 2012 the Zambia national soccer team players, the likes of Joshua Titima, with the Cabo Warriors assistant coach in Tukampamba, offering supplications to God before we won the Africa Cup. What is wrong with Kelvin Kalila kneeling and praying to God as no, the but, game is going on? But he's not praying. He's just been kneeling since the game started. So what does that mean? So, but I mean, in football, there are a lot of myths um, so on the particularly African football. No, but what you know, wrong what has he means? done then? He hasn't done anything, but you're saying the fact let that he's kneeling... Let, let me take charge and say, continue <laughs> kneeling Kelvin Kalila. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a beauty about, that's a beauty about football, so on the Zambian football Very particularly. Very suspicious and superstitious. <laughs> Always suspicious. A lot of coaches have been... Uh, 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 dotted of, uh, uh, to be to believe in black magic. I think <laughs> you know that. So probably Kalila. Obviously, what is running in the fans of in the minds of the fans is that why has he been kneeling since the game began? He's not sitting on the technical bench. But again, there's no FIFA rule that says you should Martin sit on Jaka the bench. in the area Chizengu, cleared away by Lusaka Tigers. Again from the area. Now is it going to be stopped? But again, Tigers. That should be a foul by the referee. Unbelievable. He's given a throw in to Cabo Arias. Looked like, and they take it very quickly. Malela Sapu looked like he had been touched there, but the referee decided in favor of Cabo Arias. There's no rule whatsoever that stops a coach from kneeling or even praying on the touchline. But uh, a lot of superstitions, a lot of uh, accusations of witchcraft and juju in Zambian football. It's an unsavory, you know, situation and moment as Maseka Londa lofts one throw into the, lofts a throw into the Tigers area, heads here and there, stopped by Zulu looking for Mbombo, stopped again by the Saka Tigers and they sweep the ball away from the danger zone. The chest is on again here on this side, Captain Kavasa and Monga Chilimba, but it's Chilimba who wins that battle. Quickly taken. The youngster is fouled, and the referee says it's a Cabo Warriors ball. Well, so far, 42 minutes, with about three minutes to go before the close of the half, not so much talking points apart from that Mbombo miss Chizengu, and of course the substitution of goalkeeper, you know, few Desmuya after 10 minutes. There hasn't been any sparks in as far as this particular game is concerned. Yeah, there hasn't been any sparks. I think the goodness is um, seeing a lot of positives coming from Lusaka Ti Tigers. They are now taking the game uh, to Kawa Warriors. And I think that they had been quiet for a larger part of um, uh, this first half. But of course, at some point, they managed to respond um, and they are taking the game to Kawa Warriors. It's now slowly becoming into a seesaw. You see the ball going into uh, Lusaka Tigers uh, zone as well as um, uh, Kawa Warriors zone. They are now taking the game to Kawa Warriors. So, that has, I think so far that's um, one of the talking points. But of course, maybe even uh, the Kalila one could be a talking point. <laughs> well, it could be a talking point. As the Tigers the player is fouled, the middle of the pack, center circle arc. Cabo Warriors are unable to add to their four corner kicks that they have had so far in this particular game. Chilimba, very strong at the back, heading. Martin Daka loses possession easily. It's Matthew Sichone on the ball, passing it well. But they take it and lose possession again, very cheaply indeed, in the middle of the pack. Couple warriors are coming with him so far on the left. It's a good, good ball. It's going into the area now. Cross the ball! Lamek Kafwaya only needed to make a touch there Chizengu only needed to make the slightest the faintest of touches to, to guide the boy look at that brilliantly done by Insofa Mansa the under 20 Zambia International but Lame Kafwaya the bearing got the bearing very wrong there I think those are some those are some of the goals that uh, should have counted. I think some of the chances. Uh, sorry, yeah. some of the chances, of course, that uh, 
should have counted. It was, um, uh, 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 he just needed the slightest touch, but of course he didn't read the ball very well. I think he must have been faster than the ball uh, was anticipated to have gone in the 18 yard um, uh, bolt. But so far, so good, Warriors. But my worry again is not taking advantage, not utilizing your chances. In football, usually, these chances will come and boomerang. Fantastic. A feature, crowd. There, isn't it? A feature of the Cabo Warriors fans where they have these, uh, you know. <laughs> All colors sort of support from Magnificent People's Team, Cabo Warriors. True to their tag of being a people's team, you have Europeans and whites and blacks and look at that, lovely stuff. With an Everton <laughs> fan in blue, probably representing the Blue of Warriors as they are on the attack. Now the goal! Wow! Brilliant! Turning for his earlier misses. Brilliant cross. Brilliant header. 1-0 to second place, Magnificent and Cabo Warriors. Chisengu. Well, I think I agree this time around. He needed to respond positively. Looking at the last game, he wasted a lot of chances. Particularly even in this count, I think he missed a sitter, a one-on-one -on -one situation with the goalkeeper. He beat the goalkeeper, he failed to bury that one. But this time around, using his head, where he's very, very dangerous. When it comes to uh, 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 using his head, he's a very, very dangerous striker. There's a cross, it came from the uh, right wing, and there he nods the ball in without much ado, beating the substitute um, uh, goalkeeper. Idris Mbombo, he's back again to his scoring abilities. He's showing really that he's a man that moves Cabo Warriors uh, uh, up on top. Brilliant goal by Idris Mbombo. The Congolese forward must be the seventh goal of the season. And uh, he is on cloud nine as Cabo Warriors now lead Lusaka Tigers by one goal to zero. It was very important for him to score that goal because in the 36th minute he missed the chance. 43rd minute he missed the chance and now in the 45th minute Mbombo has put Warriors in the lead and there he is on the ball flicking on for Kafaya. Again Warriors have got a chance. Straight into the palms of the goalkeeper Emmanuel Nondo. Masai Kalonda back to the goalkeeper William Chibale. That's Mbombo on the ball again, Idris, combining well with Lamek Kafwaya. Jerek commits a foul in the area, vastly experienced, groomed by prison leopards here in Kawe. That's the veteran now, isn't he, Siloni Jere, defending from the front, Chisengo. A veteran indeed, um, Sonda, and the goodness, he brings this experience uh, to this Cabo Warriors uh, side. He's in charge of the midfield at all the times. He never fought us, and which is a very, very um, a good aspect coming and from an experienced, uh, uh, an experienced uh, player in the name of uh, uh, Siloni, Siloni Jerry. 32 years of old, a age like you rightly put it, and he doesn't seem to be losing uh, steam. Like you said, he gets fine like wine when it gets old. <laughs> I drew Simbombo in the picture. I may say that, but I don't know anything about it since I'm not like you, Chizengu, who loves the waters of Babylon. William Chibale. <laughs> I, I don't love them. I, I just partake. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very good thing. And that's the halftime whistle from Mr. Mutumba. And it is Cabo Warriors, the home side, that lead by one go to zero. That coach is Engu coming from Idris Mbombo, pinpoint header after he had missed three good chances. Substitute goalkeeper Emmanuel Nondo, no chance. Who came on in the 10th minute as Chintukampamba passes behind? Maybe he was praying also up there, isn't it? <laughs> Obviously, knowing him, he's a prayer warrior. <laughs> he's a prayer warrior, so probably <laughs> that's why he deliberately didn't want to sit on the technical bench and he decided to go. He had to uh, be in the roof to pray. Watch the game from the roof, and I can imagine he was kneeling. It's just an unfortunate I didn't see his knees just to prove that he was kneeling to pray. But of course, a good performance by Kawa Warriors. They started in gear five, like I rightly put it, and of course, 
playing from instructions. Coach Muhammad Fati has not had a chance to sit on his technical bench. He's been busy giving instructions to Kawa Warriors. And the only way that Warriors showed that they've been getting those instructions is by leading and, of course, making sure that they score before going to uh, halftime. So it's a good performance by Warriors. But, of course, Lusaka Tigers were coming into the game. And I think they started taking the game to uh, Kawa Warriors. But, unfortunately, they haven't had clear chances, chances that we can really talk about. Chitalu Stadium. This, uh, this man from uh, Congo, that is Idris Mbimba. But so far, so good. It's been a very, very tight 45 minutes. Maybe the last 45 minutes we'll see a different change over the wind altogether. But George, obviously, so many talking points here. It's very heated. All the players look like the tempers are very high indeed from both sides. But again, coming to Kyle Wallace's play, the first 45 minutes, Kyle Wallace were really squeezing so much Lusaka Tigers on their backside. But still, that goal was very elusive until the last dying minutes of the last 45 minutes. Well, uh, team, thank you very much. I believe some people out there will be asking, wow, are we seeing a brother of Fabrice Mbimba? I, actually, it's Idris Mbombo, you know, the Congolese international right there, as you've put it. Uh, but coming to the, you know, the area of field of play, I should say that uh, it was a, a beautiful action that uh, Kawa Warriors had to display. They are trying to their level boss to push, you know, uh, Lusaka Tigers very hard, but, you know, they took so much time for them to find the back of the net. And uh, they created a couple of chances. Uh, in the last, you know, uh, should be in the 36th minute. This is a player that, you know, missed a chance. Uh, you know, Idris Mbombo, he had a beautiful chance, a one-in-one -one situation that had to support, obviously, he was supposed to bury the, you know, uh, put the ball at the back of the net after rounding off the goalkeeper, but that was not the case. He had, you know, uh, to shoot wide and it was very much disappointing, you know, uh, to the fans. But later on, you know, just a few minutes later, uh, should be, you know, uh, eight minutes later, he had to, you know, uh, to capitalize, you know, uh, the, the chance that he had this time around. It was a beautiful header. But before that, you understand also that uh, there was a, another header, a free header that he had. He had to, you know, to head it over the bar. So is this particular player that uh, you know um, was a culprit, so to say, that for lack of better terms, in the last game they played against uh, Matero United, where he had a couple of chances but failed to bury, you know, to put the ball at the back of the net. But today, out of the three chances he's had, at least he's gotten one, you know, already, just in the first 20, 45 minutes of the game. George, what do you think I disturbed the Lusaka Tigers? Because I saw that they started very well, it very composed. But uh, the moment uh, their goalkeeper was stretched out, that few days, uh, uh, few, the few days goalkeeper, just according to his name, few days, he just spent a few minutes, uh, you know, uh, during a uh, you know play, but he was uh, you know sidelined because of a uh, hand injury. So, do you think that somehow affected 
the players for Lusaka Tigers? Well, Tim, if you ask me for a few days to, to find themselves, himself, so to say, in the action, or maybe to have find himself injured, it's because of, you know, so much pressure that, you know, was mounting on him. It's because the possession or the ball was obviously in the, in, always in the half, you know, of uh, Lusaka Tigers. They never pressed so hard to push, you know, Kawariyas away from their goal. They, you know, tried to cage, they, they allowed themselves, you know, to, to be caged, so to say, in their own area. And that resulted into the goalkeeper getting injured. And it, you can imagine, from the first two, you know, fouls that Kawari has committed was towards the same goalkeeper. And in the second one, obviously, it had to ensure that the goalkeeper goes out, you know, uh, for a substitute. It was a bad one, more especially for a coach, because when you go in such a game, you have different tactical approach, and you are losing, you know, making such a, a forced substitute, it was very much unfortunate, you know, uh, for the coach. But away from that, I believe the goalkeeper, the introduction of the second goalkeeper, had totally nothing to do with the goal they considered. They, you know, uh, allowed themselves to be played so hard by Kawariyas. They, whenever they're in possession of the ball, they could lose the ball so easily. I believe the way, you know, uh, the likes of, you know, the veteran himself, that's the captain of the side for Kawariyas, Silon Jere, the way he's controlling the midfield is very marvelous to watch. I uh, you know Paul Simpemba, no doubt about it, why coach Hona Janza had to give him a call-up at some point. It's all because of the beauty football he's playing. And uh, if you look at the closest that he provides, it's quite good. But one thing I've noted from the midfielders that uh, Kawariyas have, whenever they're in possession of the ball, the only person they think of is Idris Mbombo. More especially, you find that Lameka Fire, or as well as Mwasa Sofa, he's very much open. They don't give the balls to these players. They believe in the abilities of Idris Mbombo, but surely he disappointed in the first two chances, but the third one, he had to put it in the back of the net. George Kawale has kept on camping into the side of Lusaka Tigers, and you could see that that camping somehow has helped, because at some point we saw a goal from nowhere, and no other than Idris took that particular goal. It came from nowhere just to tell you that uh, they've been camping that side, they've been camping to the half side of Lusaka Tigers and somehow it paid off. Well, if you ask me, Tim, obviously I can say this with a smile. The goal that Idris scored was more difficult, you know, than the two chances that he missed, the free header that he had, the, you know, the one-on-one -on -one situation that he had after rounding off the goalkeeper. Well, there are more clear-cut chances than, you know, the goal that he scored. But it's a good thing that he scored. The fact that, you know, um, a team like Kaurias is camping in the side of Rusaka Tigers is because of pressure that is mounting on the Rusaka based side. So they have to try to their level base to, to push so hard whenever they're in possession of the ball, that's Rusaka Tigers, to try to get an equalizer maybe a, a possibly a match winner. But if at all they go into the second half with you know, with the way they played in the first half, obviously we can see, you know, Idris, even Lameka Fire, not forgetting once and so far, getting a second goal for, for us is for Mamad Fat to ensure that they cement the maximum points. Both teams know what is at stake. The maximum points will mean the other team topping the table. But as it stands in the first 45 minutes, it was a team, it was Kawa Warriors that topped the, the style of play. But for Lusaka Tigers, George, we haven't seen much pushing the goal, to the ball on the other side. That is, Kawala some have been very, very comfortable in it because they haven't been troubled much. So going to the second half, do we see Lusaka Tigers at least change the formation? Because they're not really taking the game to cover Warriors. Well, maybe they have given so much respect. Maybe even the fans out there. Because the, the time we walked in here, it, it was quite an empty stadium. But if you ask me, the terraces are quite full. They are filled in the, the stadium. They are running behind you know, the team in blue and white. And maybe that has given a team like you know, a Lusaka Tigers Tigers, something, you know, uh, to fear about. But they shouldn't fear if at all they have, you know, uh, to conquer and get an equalize in this particular game. They shouldn't give them so much respect. Let them try to change the system in the second half to ensure that they get, you know, an equalize and possibly, you know, a match winning goal. Is this goal very much enough for Kyle Wallace? So they want to come back and just seal this goal and say, let's just hold on to this and then we don't want to score any particular goal. Do you think now Muhammad Fatu come with a new strategy, getting more goals or basically it's done and dusted for now? Well, uh, if you ask me, Tim, a, a, a one-new scoreline in the game of football is never enough because it's more like a pendulum. You can swing, you can swing anywhere. You might, you know, increase the tally, or maybe you might get an, uh, you know, consider go to, to to bring the scoreline to level. So at the moment, Kawariyas they might be in the driving seat, but they're not very much comfortable for them to be, you know, to feel like they have won it already because they have they have for five minutes to add uh, another goal or maybe possibly defend that particular one. But if you ask me, the rule is very simple. The philosophy is very. Simple, the best way to defend is to attack. So let them go into the second half with the mind of attacking and maybe get another goal to ensure that they cement the maximum points. 
Right, so after 45 minutes, Kavo Warriors, the home side, are leading by a goal to nil. Case of Idrissa Mbombi, who could score. Is it Mbambi who scored that particular beautiful goal coming from nowhere? Mbombo coming from nowhere. So after 45 minutes, Kavo Warriors are leading by goal to nil. Now the big question is, will Lusaka Tigers come from behind and obviously snatch a draw or basically beat Kavo Warriors at a home tough? It has happened before. Kavo Warriors have lost before this particular home ground against uh, Mumba Medics. Maybe after 45 minutes, we might see some more goals coming between the two sides but for now Cabo Warriors are in the driving seat and you're catching all this drama live on your channel of choice that is move television live from Godfrey Stalo Stadium we'll be giving you the more more drama in the last 45 minutes of this tight tight crash of division one south the bench that made the difference remember on that particular day Jacob Piri and the young Langson Mbebe today those two players um, Jack, Jacob Piri is on the bench but the young Langson Mbebe captain of the Zambia under 17 side that participated in those games that we had hosted zone six. the zone 6 games of course that we had hosted in Lusaka he was the captain of the Zambia under 17 side that went all the way to the final but lost to South Africa. He's not on the bench today. Who do you think could come on and make that sort of a difference this afternoon from Hamad Fati? Yeah, he could, he could have, um, yeah, for Langson, like you rightly put it, he's missing, he's not part of the team. <coughs> Excuse me. He's not part of the team uh, this afternoon. But of course, um, uh, at some point, Jacob Piri definitely is going to be introduced. Against Material United, he was introduced in the same style, just as... Um, he was when they played against the city of Lusaka here. These are some of the boys can actually come in and make a difference. You talk about uh, Abud Sakala, the elder brother to Seith Sakala, uh, former Israeli uh, uh, Zambia's export to Israel, who is now back in Zambia. That's the elder brother, Abud Sakala. And Godfrey Nguenya also, he's a boy that can come on and change the complexion of this Warriors uh, squad. So in terms of ammunition on the bench, I think Kawa Warriors are well equipped and I don't think Muhammad Fati can run short of uh, replacements. Kawa Warriors in a huddle, in blue, they are praying. There's no discontent. There's no winter of discontent. It's winter here in Zambia from the home crowd. When Kelvin Kalila had gone on his knees in supplication, there was a lot of uh, kefaf, if you like. But now, Kabo warriors went together in a huddle there to pray. And as Chin to Kampamba, the prayer warrior, like you say, passes behind us again. 
He's watching the game from the rooftop, Chintu Kampamba. Very interestingly, he played with Dixon Chandamape. There's another player who is offering supplications to the Almighty. Very good thing to see, particularly when there's superstitions of Juju, that players are turning to the Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for inspiration rather than black magic. As couple warriors who get us underway, it's Leighton Kafuaya and Idris Mbombo, the scorer of the only goal so far to get us underway, Siloni Jere, Tikingwenya Jr. looking for Simpemba, Pate, Saka Tigers have taken over, only just cleared by Matthews Sichone, Center Seco Remy Tembo, all the way to Emmanuel Kawasa. Changing passes now, entering Warriors territory. Protected by Monga Chilimba, who just pushes the ball into touch for a throw. The number four for Magnificent People's Team, Cabo Warriors. They are leading, and if it remains like this, Chizengu, they will be going back to the top of the table. And obviously they will be saying that's where we... That's where we, 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 we deserve to be. We deserve to be on top. We've always been on top, and that was just a minor setback. That is what is going to be, uh, obviously, roaming at the back of their minds. But of course, it's a Kawa Warrior side that has always uh, looked composed and with a lot of uh, uh, confidence, particularly when they are playing here at Godfrey Yuka State. For the Tigers, they no longer have internationals. Like I said earlier on, they were formed in 1954, then called Matero All Blacks. But they have had a number of good players in the past. Gianni Simulambo, Charles Kabulai, Stanley Piri, including Biswo Piri who played here at Cabo Warriors, John Puchamanza, another of those that played for both Lusaka Tigers and, and Cabo Warriors. They're not producing some of those big name players anymore, Lusaka Tigers. But what's making them be on top of the table, Chizengu? We haven't seen so much of them today. And uh, one would wonder, is this the team that is on top of the division? Yeah, I think uh, sometimes uh, moves are not all days are Mondays. But if you look at uh, Lusaka Tigers, this is a team that is composed of a lot of youngsters. And then probably that's why they are, they are, they are on top. Um, they've been on top or probably they are forming a, a strong opposition in this Division 1 uh, uh, South League. They are full of youngsters, a lot of boys with a lot of energies. And you never know what some period has actually been telling them in, ter in terms of um, motivation. You see, at times when you play so much in the lower ranks, time comes when you say, I think enough is enough we need to jack up get rid of uh, tired legs and bring in fresh legs and this is a, a, a mission that they have probably this season to get to a premier league next season and uh, the Saka tigers attack now with their captain kabasa is he going to cross turns good shot kelvin kalila shaking his head there and the team physio, Chanda Musonda, just wondering why their team captain, Imano Kawasa, did not just place the ball to the left of William Chiba. Yeah, I think uh, on that occasion, it was uh, a trying moment, but I think um, uh, Kabasa should have done better than that because he was quite in a tight angle. There's a slow-mo as we get it. The angle that he was on, he was very, very uh, 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 tight because uh, Monga Chilimba obviously tried to close him down. He damaged him well. There it is, but it was a very, very tight, tight angle. He should have placed it inside, probably give it to his colleague there uh, who was right in, in front of the goal mouth. And that chance started earlier by their leading scorer on nine goals. That's Malela Saf. Substitute goalkeeper, uncorrected. They get us probably four names or numbers. The goalkeeper is Mike Panda and not Emmanuel Nondo. So apologies there. But this is what we are given as a big Cabo Arias fans following proceedings from the grandstand. And uh, you can see it's a cosmopolitan kind of crowd, Chizengu. They are supporting this warrior side as they attack now. Deflected into touch for a corner. And uh, Sichon just to block there as warriors get their fifth corner and the first of the first half. Chizeng. Yeah, of course, again, they've started like the way they started in... in, in, in uh, like the way they started in the in the in the first half, I think they they started in gear five, and again, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, they've started again in gear five. So they are looking forward to score as many goals as uh, as possible, and it's going to be good for Kawa Warriors because you need to to have both advantages, point wise as well as a goal different wise. So that in case a team like Lusaka Tigers keeps on chasing very close like that, um, it's it's not going to be easy for Kawa Warriors to be actually caught. First corner coming after four minutes again. Slow motion there. Good pass by Simone Jare. But uh, Simpemba was it. Was it the danger man failing to um, find the target? As uh, a way by uh, Marcel Kalonda, he did very well there because he was pursued closely by Malela Sapu. It is the Tigers from Lusaka that have started on a faster and more purposeful note this second half. Maybe the pep talk by uh, Dixon Chandamape beginning to work. That it's magic on this Osaka Tiger side, Chizengo. Yeah, of course, they have started on a, on a brighter note. I think both sides have actually started on a brighter note. But I think the pep talk for Osaka uh, Tigers has worked uh, quite well. I think we saw them uh, threatening early in the opening stages of the second half. And there they go again. <laughs> going down decisively and very very strongly after some good build up Kavasa there again as we see it nicely set up but uh, the goalkeeper doing very very well going down and uh, just you know holding on to the ball decisively still Warriors win the one go to zero here that make a flyer with simple stopped by Tigers Similar style, um, Sonde, like you rightly put it, it was a long, long throw in, of course, by this man, Marcel Kalonda, and uh, Langson Mbewe easily put it at the back of uh, at the back of the net. Talking about the left and right um, the wing backs, I think for Warriors they've been fantastic. Levis Wood as well as uh, uh, Dicky Boyer, they haven't been a disappointment so far. They are helping in attack, they are helping in attack, and even when Warriors is building in attack, they tend to join in very well. Just wide and Mike Panda will be feeling very comforted. They are now shooting in the northern direction. Left of your picture, Osaka Tigers, the bright orange shirts. They have been a team spinning this division for about 11 years or so. We'll be able to give you the exact information as the ball again it missed the keeper but it's finishing and the Liverpool again the defender did very well Sakeo Musala Congolese on Congolese to just take the ball out into touch for a corner but I dress Simbongo after beating the goalkeeper he should have applied the finishing gloss, Exactly, Mzonda. He should have applied the finishing gloss. He beat the goalkeeper once again for the second time and did what he did in the first half, missing in an empty goal. But of course, Zake was equal to the task and was very good in terms of goal watching. That is very, very good defending. He never seemed to have panicked. The moment he saw his goalkeeper going out, he did run to go and cover in the goal post. That's a very, very good attribute of the defender. Very good recovery there by Mozala Zakeo. Idris Mbombo getting around the keeper. But uh, Mozala there 
a short left power, or maybe he should have just placed it to Lame Kafaya, who could have finished with the plum. Still remains 1 0 here in favor of the Blues. That's Cabo Warriors. Somebody was shouting behind us that Mukasikamba to Aminuariam Gang and you Aminuariam Kuku. But uh, <laughs> we haven't seen that in, in Kuku which has been eaten. Is it the chicken from yesterday's Guinea Bissau game? <laughs> I think we are neutral, so we well, absolutely we, are, we can't sing praises for a particular side. Uh huh. And then <laughs> some period was telling me that they were never called Matero Tigers, but I can see the goalkeeper there who had to come off with the Matero jersey number one. But of course they were called Matero Tigers in 1954, well 1964 practically because they started off with Saga Tigers as the Matero or Blacks, maybe as a resistant group, you know, from the colonialism that we used to have here in Zambia, called Matero or Blacks, but then the Kembusaka, Matero Tigers. The referee there with William Chibale, just telling him to take it easy, not to delay the game. I would not be very surprised, Chizengu, if they decide, if, if the referee decides to show a yellow card, as you see, some Warriors players being taken through their paces, maybe being ready. Should have been Jaco Piri in the picture a little earlier to come on and probably add to the one goal that they are enjoying in this particular game, Warriors. Yeah, indeed, uh, sometimes goalkeepers uh, tend to uh, employ delaying tactics so early. I mean, we've still got a long way to go. We've still got a long way to go. It's about 10 minutes played or in the second half. There's still a lot of minutes to it be played. 35 minutes to be precise, to, okay. to be played, that you cannot be playing with the ball and uh, expect because the can check Martin Daka there doing his team in style. He's a holding midfielder, past the experience, played for Zanaka, played in Angola, played for Gonkola Place, played for Jaga Rangers. Now, I do some turns in the area. Good recovery again by that young defender on the right, Sichone. The referee said it was not infringement, crossed by Levi Zulu and uh, Simbemba is on the ball, but again, and the Warriors were appealing for a throw in, but uh, I mean for a corner kick, but Kunda Singoi, the nephew to the coach, Dixon Chandarape, we very happy with that decision by Mr. Mutumba, the match winner. Yeah, indeed, um, we've, we are seeing Lusaka Tigers again trying to come into, into the game. Slowly they are coming into the game, but I think uh, 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 the side to talk about more is, is Kawa Warriors, because Kawa Warriors have continued uh, to pile in a lot of pressure on uh, Lusaka Tigers. I think Idris, on that occasion, he held on to the ball so much. The moment that he beat uh, one defender, he should have placed the ball inside, because there were a lot of boys, like um, a, a, a lot of his colleagues, like Lamek Kafaya, who is of the times and marked right in the 18 yard box i think the better option should have been to pass and not think of um, a dribbling a second defender kabasa all the way to sichone to chivesa but nothing could come out of that particular attack very disjointed at this particular juncture chizengu the tigers from the south not playing coordinated football i think they are starting like the way they started again in the in the, in the first half. Maybe that's why we are seeing some guys warming up already. Maybe, and those are good signs. Usually when um, you see uh, uh, the guys on the bench start uh, to warm up, it means that the coach maybe is reading the game and any time he could unleash one or two guys as um, uh, substitutes uh, to get on the pitch and probably uh, uh, trying to, to correct the mistakes that uh, Lusaka Tigers is actually making. But so far, nothing really to write home about, um, uh, about Lusaka Tigers. They are not playing coordinated football. Difficult to see yet again uh, the formation that they are actually uh, are using in terms of play. What's the former Cabo Warriors goalkeeper? Seferino Chanda, two sons and two grandsons on the pitch, former Cabo Warriors goalkeeper, big Cabo Warriors fan. He should be happy with what is going on at the moment. And then there you see Remy Tembo just remonstrating with the second assistant referee, probably crying out that he was fouled, but uh, the assistant referee far away from here is having none of that. That's love more. Jerry from Chilanga, the 39-year-old police officer, second assistant referee, having none of it. We 
William Chibale getting rid of the ball. High press Bombo beaten. Jerry fights with the Bombo. Tigers come away with it. Chibesa has got a good left foot. Lusingoi, his cousin, headed by Monga Chilimba into touch for a throw. As couple warriors on the touchline, not in your picture, they are now in your picture. Jacob Piri is about to come on. Super substitute as uh, the assistant uh, coach for the Tigers. Akufuna there, the number five. And it's in so far, Mwansa, scorer the last time we were here of the first goal when they beat City of Lusaka. Who comes out for another scorer when we were last here, Chizengu, that's Jacob Piri. And let's see whether they could replicate the sort of performance that they had against City of Lusaka. Incidentally, in that game, Chizengu, if you remember, they laid by one goal to zero. That goal which was scored first by uh, so far, you know, Mwansa and uh, this man in your picture, Jacob Piri, came on to increase the tally to two before Lamson Bebe made. Trying to replicate that sort of performance here, you know, Muhammad Fatih. Indeed, and these are calculated substitutions, and usually it has worked well for uh, Muhammad Fatih. But I think for Mwansan so far, uh, Coach Muhammad Fatih, for me, I think he's, even, he's taken a little bit of some time to take him off because he's really been off um, this whole game. In the first half, it was difficult to see actually if he's actually in the game. But I think uh, maybe the coach tried to give him some bit of time maybe just to see if he can actually come back into the game. But that was not to be the case. Jacob Piri, a very good uh, attacking um, uh, midfielder. He can make a difference. He can make a difference indeed as Tigers try to attack. But... Uh, on the line is Dicky Nguenya Jr. Bauchi there just trying to instruct him to be a bit tight on the Tigers of Lusaka. fans, most of them white and black, all sorts of colors. It's indeed the people's team as they take one of those long throw-ins by Marse Kalonda. He's not had one of those impressive games, Marse Kalonda. Maybe it's because of the ineptness of this Osaka Tigers front line, but uh, he has showed up every time there's been this set-piece situation, throwing in the area, headed out by Tigers on that particular occasion, they control the ball with Sapu Malela. Looks like Chivesa controlling the ball in midfield. Passes to his cousin on the left, Funda Singoi. Gamasa, the captain, looking for Sapu. No trouble there for William Chibare. Tigers may not have produced international players of late, but they have produced first presidents, have, haven't they? Michael Chiti was general secretary of the Football Association, and of course, the famous Evaristo Kasunga also came from Lusaka Tigers. And also, Sam Piri, the man who we were laughing that he's the one that delivered the letter to dismiss or to revert on Janza. Technical director, Roward Football House, Sam Piri, is accountant at a, you know, football house. He is their chairman now as they're going to cross the ball. Warriors putting Tigers under the cush. So we are saying that they may not have produced these international players, Chizengu, but they have produced some good administrators as well. Some period counted at Football House, bar that delivery of a dismissal letter at the airport. As we see Levi Zulu doing his thing in style again. Is he going to cross the ball? Yes, he crosses. Inside the goalkeeper, Mike Panda does well just to pick it up off Idris Bombo, you think? Yeah, the goalkeeper, I think uh, he has fitted in well so far in the second half. He doesn't look uh, jittery, but I think uh, uh, 
Lusaka Tigers are slowly coming into the game this second half. We've seen their captain, of course, trying to take um, the game to Kawa Warriors. They've actually managed to enter uh, the 18-yard box three times since uh, the second half actually resumed. The delaying tactics in Musonda, I think it's too early. It's too early for William Chwale to be doing this. It's important that he, they try to push the ball up front to get as many goals as, as, uh, as possible, uh, Musonda. But like this, he's playing with the ball. But the only way to make him come back to, to uh, that sense of urgency is when Tigers score. You see how he's, he's going to start panicking with a ball like it's a hot potato in his hands. 25 minutes to go. We saw this about two weeks ago where John Muir, the Galomo Jaitas goalkeeper, was employing similar tactics until he conceded and he was getting rid of the ball quickly. But uh, William Chivale picture slow motion again of that Warriors attack. Michael Banda having no trouble in holding the ball. Idris Mbombo is on the ground. Again, here is an example of a good attacking fullback bringing the ball in the area. Idris Mbombo, that's how he got injured. There wasn't any touch on him whatsoever, Chizengu. Yeah, there wasn't. I mean, from the replays, it shows that uh, there wasn't um, uh, any, any touch that could actually uh, uh, warrant a foul or probably him to go down, unless if it's a, re a reoccurrence. If at all, uh, it's a part that uh, got affected earlier on in the early stages of the game, and then maybe it has just um, reoccurred. So you never know. You know, sometimes in football, a lot of things can actually happen. Others would want to hang on, even when they've got a bit of some pain in their shoulder or in their body. Maybe the same can be said about uh, Idris Mbombo. Idris Mbombo, they are seemingly feeling fine. It's their danger man, it's their scorer, and he's been their man in as far as this match is concerned. As you can see, Usaka Tigers making their first substitution. That substitution coming after 66 minutes. They have taken off Stephen Chivesa Chanda. He hasn't really had a sparkling game the son of the coach and they have brought on what looks like Emmanuel Nondo who will be able to make a confirmation with Georgie Ochao Piri Jr. on who has come in is it Moses Mwanza yes it is Moses Mwanza that has come on for the 17 year old Stephen Chivesa Chanda the son of the head coach there he is again just like his father the haircut you know everything like the father used to cut in his back in the day remember that he played in that in, in the all africa games was it 1999, 1999. on the same team that uh, you know chintu kampamba came to the fall you know uh two and uh, that is the time then then that uh, moses sichone moved to germany i remember they lost via post-match penalties by five goals to four again the bench of the Lusaka Tigers there with uh, the young Stephen, you know, Chanda, the number three with the water bottle in his hands, who's just been taken off. And Dixon Chanda Mape did not take on any of the penalties when Zambia lost by five goals to four against uh, Cameroon. Cameroon, of course, that particular year going on to represent Africa at the Olympic Games. And if Zambia had won gold at those all Africa Games, they would have gone on to... Um, play at the Olympics again. Jerry, all the way to Levi Zulu, ah, over the bar. That was <laughs> a defender's shot. Chizengu, more or less like a clearance than a, a well-angled shot looking for that top uh, right-hand corner. Again, Musonda, it's the experience that comes with um, uh, Siloni Jerry, the experience that he possesses. He saw that they were in almost a counter-attack because it was a four against a three situation. And he decided to play the ball wide to Levi Zuru because he's the one who had a lot of uh, space on the far left flank there. Intelligent play, of course, from uh, Siloni Jerry. Showing a lot of experience. The 32-year-old former Prison Leopards player Prison Leopards, by the way, drew with Nampundo yesterday, 0-0 zero, zero here in Kabwe. He was groomed by Prison Leopards. He's been here at Cabo Warriors, um, Siloni Jerry, for about seven years. William Chivale now organizing his uh, human war as Lusaka Tigers float the ball into the area. And Chivale 
get some protection from the referee. Was there a push there or oh, it's one of those uh, home decisions if it were in boxing, they would call it? <laughs> yeah, except that uh, the only difference in football, there are no, no rematch in football. In boxing, there's a lot of rematches that have actually been uh, sanctioned by uh, uh, their respective bodies. But of course, I think it, it, it was just one of those um, uh, home ground um, uh, 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 decisions that uh, referees uh, tend to uh, actually uh, make. I think there wasn't any touch for William Chibale. Talking about three matches, Chizengu making a reference to Catherine Piri and obviously Esther Piri. No relationship. They had their bouts ended controversially in terms of the decisions and they will definitely have some rematches. But back to the football. It's Warriors taking a free kick inside inside tigers on area Masse Kalonda looking for his fellow congolese and the goalkeeper is protected and trying just to uh warn <laughs> idris simbombo to see take it will, easy take will. it easy you so saw i got to the ball first <laughs> i suppose there's some nyanja there you go again <laughs> there you go again <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, excuse my chi, but in football it does happen. So there you go again. <laughs> but obviously, that Nyanja Congolese him sonda, how did he respond? He went, na 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 <laughs> we'll have to, to speak to Idris Mbombo so we may understand how he speaks, you know, his Nyanja. He has been around for two seasons, hasn't he? Or is his first season here at Cabo Warriors, second season for Cabo Warriors, Idris Mbombo, the number nine scorer, of course, of the Oligo, all the way from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Lusaka Tigers also do have some Congolese in their ranks and uh, all of them doing quite well. Uh, here, Zakeo Muzala, we have seen him already, he's done very well. Malela Sapu has missed a few chances, but uh, he's had a, a good game. Also, another Congolese, and then there's also Frank Karuba, the number 11, who is the vice captain of the Lusaka Tiger side. As referee there, Mutumba, just signaling for, um, should have been offside. And the uh, goalkeeper, William Chivale. It's very easy indeed, Chizengu. He's not in a hurry. He knows that the 1 0 is enough. It's tough tackling again by uh, Sakeo Muzala, gentleman that we talked about who is from Congo as well, groomed by Don Bosco. He's done very well for this Lusaka Tiger side in helping it into first position until now. Jerry to touch for a corner. Ricochet in the board of Brian Chanda, the Tigers number two on that particular occasion. And it is the eighth corner that Cabo Warriors are taking. Earlier, Chizengu, we saw the first yellow card of the match being flashed to Paul Simpemba of Cabo Warriors. As a, they just place it inside the area. Paul Simpemba, the man who's gotten a yellow, had failed to make a touch. Now, Daka crosses. Simpemba's got a chance. Jerry is there, but the goalkeeper, Mike Panda, good strong hands, and he goes down Chizengu to affect the danger. Yeah, good hands indeed. I think he's very, very good in the in the air. I think he's not been beaten by any aerial balls that um, Warriors have actually tried to take um, uh, uh, to Lusaka uh, uh, Tigers. He's a good goalkeeper so far, very good posture, but of course, they trail to a tune of one goal to near. And that's good! Sprint is allowed! Offside. Mohamed Fati can't believe it. He can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's asking, what's this? Jacob Piri, the substitute there, got into the area very, very well. Shot. Offside indeed. Yeah, there you are. Lame Kafuaya. It's not counting. Good decision by the first assistant referee, Roy Mwesa, and uh, the referee, Mutumba just agreeing with him and it's still Cabo Warriors leading by one go to zero scored by that man on the ball Masei Kalonda now to Siloni Jerry far left 
shooting Wenya Junior. Changing passes. Bossim Pemba. Got a chance. Good save by the goalkeeper Mike Banders. Warriors now pile the pressure looking for the second goal that will clinch this particular match. Yeah, so far so good for Kawa Warriors. I think they seem to be coming back uh, in the game. They seem to be coming back in the game and looks like they've been buoyed by that disallowed goal. From nowhere, they've pampered themselves so much trying to get at goal after being disallowed with that um, uh, goal. And they're taking their ninth corner, if I'm not mistaken, Musonda, on that um, uh, occasion. Of course, a good save by the goalkeeper, Mike Banda. He seems to have gotten into, into, into the game, of the start of, into the game in this second half um, uh, 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 situation. A good save. Which has saved, uh, uh, which has saved uh, Lusaka Tigers. I think it should have been 2 0 because that was a cracker of the shot, and I think Mike Banda was equal to the task. Mike Banda did very well. The man in your picture there, who came on after 10 minutes when their number one goalkeeper, Few Des Muya, was taken off, injured. Michael Banda has come on and does not look phased, like Chiseng was rightly pointed out, saving on point blank range there. It could have been the end of the match in as far as the second goal is concerned. It could have been the end of it. Tigers could not have recovered. Again, they're taking their time. Not too sure for what. The referee actually had to stop play because both boys were now celebrating around, um, uh, around the pitch, which is actually, I think, uh, not acceptable. <laughs> Very unprofessional. <laughs> Very unprofessional. You, so, you, can't, you cannot divorce your so, love for your club and there's a corner swung in again. Parried away by Mike Banda. He's done very well. Again, Sichone. We see the captain Kabasa there getting a throw off Dick Gwenya Jr. I was saying the poor boys, you cannot divorce their love for Warriors in this situation. They will celebrate. Maybe they will even hold on to the boy a little longer. Just like we were saying about Mr. Seferino Ch Inochanda, the former. Warriors goalkeeper, who is the father of the Lusaka Tigers head coach. We were told that he would be supporting Warriors and he should be very happy with the scoreline. But I mean, if Tigers lose one, two, three, four games and his son is fired, would he still celebrate? Okay. But anyway, that's a story for another day. As the Tigers come away with it now, Masekal on the shields. Chivale theatrically goes down. And he gets a hand from the crowd, seemingly pleased with his antics. <laughs> There's about 14 minutes to go before the close of this match. And 14 minutes is a, is a, is a, way, is a way, way to go before the game. And he has to be very careful. The goalkeeper, Dikin Wenya, throws. Simpemba dancing on the ball, dazzling skills to Jerry. But they have taken the ball with Kabasa. They can't control. Usaka Tigers taking Wenya again to Simpemba, stolen from his nose. The suit there by Martin Daka, who apologizes. To the Lusaka Tigers player. Warriors warming up three players. Chizangu. Yeah, they are warming up three players, probably just uh, trying to ensure that uh, because 1 0 is never a safe lead, of course. Uh, We've seen uh, Ben Chong, of course, uh, uh, Panji Skanyik, of course, one of the guys that are actually warming up on the sidelines, uh, just behind their goalkeeper, William uh, Chivali. So Muhammad Fati probably trying to unleash more power just to get uh, the needed goals, that, uh, a lot of goals that uh, Kawa Warriors uh, need. Because, like I rightly put it in the, in the early stages to say, they need a lot of points. They need a good goal difference so that they are not caught napping should they get tired as the league progresses that could actually work uh, 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 to, to their favor. It's going to be a foul considered by Idris Mbombo. Again, one of those players, the number 11, Ben Chengo for Cabo Warriors. He was groomed by Livingstone Pirates, played in Mozambique, Tete Province, Tete District to be specific. Now coming back 
to Cabo Warriors. Second season, he was with them last season. Second season, Ben Chengo, but mainly used from the bench if used at all by Muhammad Fati. Kabasa for Tigers, threading the ball into the area, but cleared by Momba Chilimba. Daka. Jerry, Kafuaya, Jerry. Well shooted. Back to Mike Panda. Maseka Londa misses. Levi Zulu had to be, was it Tikinguenya Junior had to be very, very late there off uh, Malela Sapu. But Kabasa has come again. Emmanuel. Tikinguenya was appealing. For a foul, but the referee Mutumba has decided to throw in to the Saga Tigers. Swept away by Momba Chilimba, looking for Bombo. Idris, one on one with Sichone, beats him clean. It hits the side netting, Chizengu. It side netting. Looks, it looks like Fascinating indeed, and designating always looks like a goal. I almost, <laughs> I almost got off my seat thinking that it's a, it's a goal because well, well, well beaten. The, the defender was well beaten. And unleashing that thunderbolt of a left-footed shot, I think this boy is, is just something else. He's a, he's a marvel to watch. He's a marvel to watch indeed. And you said earlier that they seem to be, to be buoyed by that particular disallowed goal. Good chance! Kafuaya afforded acres of space in that Kusaka Tigers area but shooting wide he should have done better the number 25, Lame Kafuaya Chisen. Yeah, he should have done better because again, I thought he, he was actually coming from an offside so probably that was a gifted, uh, a gifted chance that was given with uh, open hands by the referee and he should have taken advantage of that but unfortunately he shot wide. Zulu crosses! Missed again by the defense of Usaka Tigers. Paul Simpemba, is he going to find it? He finds it. He will bring it back in the area. Crosses again! The goalkeeper did very well to fend off Siloni Jere. Warriors, of course, coming in again with a lot of firepower. A lot of talk, of course, coming from uh, the technical bench. Muhammad Fati is up standing again. But of course, I can see off your picture, I can, I can see uh, 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 Bauchi trying to call one of the players to actually make that um, su substitution. But of course, Ochao is going to give us uh, that statistic. A good play, of course, by um, uh, Kawa Warriors. In the middle of the park, they seem to be dominating very well. You can see Martin Daka as well as uh, Silon Jerry, the way they are playing. Very well coordinated in the middle of the park. And they've made it difficult for Lusaka Tigers to have play in that middle of the park they look like they'll be closing out this particular game they look like they are closing in on top position couple warriors as you see their bench very very active Bauchi happy Sichikolo giving instructions on the bench as they continue to lead by one go to zero and somebody is going to be shown a yellow card for delaying the game referee Hendrix Mutumba in conversation tete a tete with Siloni Jere. Just patting the referee on the back. They are both 32 year olds. Check it easy, Moana. Normally, it is the referee who will tell a player. Interestingly, off the picture. Kelvin Kalila still kneeling. Hopefully it won't be in vain. Chibale. Slots one. Simpemba was failed, but no, we saw from Hendrix Mutumba, the referee. Jerry. seems to have spotted something she's saying what is it what, what 
What was that about? There was an infringement when um, uh, the two players went up in the air. Of course, um, one of uh, the Lusaka Tigers defenders was actually Did just to have Zegu. pushed. Uh, yeah, Jiki Mgwenya making his prayers. But let's get back to what had happened earlier on. Who was who was fouling who, Chizengo? I think the Lusaka Tigers defender, when the ball went up in the ball, he was at judge to have pushed uh, Siloni Jerry up in the air. And the referee blew for a free kick, it, for an infringement. And it's a free kick now to uh, cover Warriors. And it's Martin Daka standing on the ball, Chizengu, as the young Godfrey Mgwenya. There again, that is the situation that you are telling us about. Godfrey Mgwenya, air terrorizing stars coming on onto this match, replacing Paul Simpemba. Paul Simpemba is a midfielder but with an eye for goal. Wallace, this young Godfrey Mgwenya, flowering on the ball, what is Muhammad Fati trying to do? Well, I think uh, it's just a tactical approach. He's also trying to keep it a little bit uh, watertight, if I may use your, your term, because he can use uh, God, uh, uh, Dicky, uh, Godfrey Nguyenia Jr. He can, also, he, 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 he can be used on the defensive aspect. So when they are, uh, going, at, when they are going behind or when they are retracting, he is the boy that can actually form that um, a part of the human war in terms of um, uh, being defensive. Precisely, Chizengu, as a Tigers trying to come away with it. Passing the ball from one player to the other. Kabaso, Kabasa, rather. Far away from here. Towards Levi Zulu. Does well to come inside. But Chilimba. Looking for the danger man in Bombo. Controls the ball brilliantly. That defender, Matthew Sichone. This boy has been in Mabewat in that right back position for Lusaka Tigers. He's held his position well. Only once have I seen him being beaten. Stopped by Zulu. For Manchanga Rangers man. Trying to look for Dick Nguenya on the right. They have got a good chance Lusaka Tigers for equalizer here. Held on to the ball too much. Unbelievable. That was a good chance, Chizengu. A good chance indeed, um, Sonda, and he should have actually done a lot more better than that. He held on to the ball for a long time, like he never knew what he wanted to do with it. And subsequently, it rose out into touch for a goalkeeper. And you can see uh, uh, William for Chivale, yeah. for, for a goal kick rather, you can see goalkeeper William Chivale there, walking majestically just to put that ball on the spot, on the goal kick spot. It looks like Remy Tembo, who fluffed his lines there, hesitated differed with the goal just in his full side failing to take full advantage and you could see moments later how Kusio Akufuna got disappointed that should have been a foul, he went in with a double footed uh, a, a, a tackle, actually professional referees actually give you a yellow goalkeeper with his hands trapped there Heavily in the POP already. Tim Physium Sonda Chanda must have done his work with the POP on the hand of few days. Muya. It didn't look very serious when he was coming off, but uh, now we can see, as you saw in your picture, that uh, actually he got seriously injured to have a plaster of Paris strapped on his hand. The first choice goalkeeper, few days Muya, as they look for the pace and the power of Idris Mbombo, bundled off the ball. The referee, <laughs> interestingly, <laughs> I thought it was Mbombo was fouled. <laughs> <laughs> interestingly and unbelievably, <laughs> awarding the free kick to <laughs> the Saka Tigers. Maybe Incredibly, interesting. Uh, maybe he has become colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he, Mbombo is actually the Saka Tigers. Let Tiger. us see it again. There. <laughs> yeah. Clear I think one was fouled. I think <laughs> one was pushed. Absolutely. Clearly, bundled <laughs> off the ball, the Congolese. But the referee awarding the free kick in the opposite direction. Incredible. And yes, Muhammad Fati rightly <laughs> upsets this. What's, what's going on? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> He's right to patient the Egyptian. He scorched in Zimbabwe. Highlanders took them to three cup finals. Left when they were doing quite well. 
and uh, after a pay dispute, he left in what is known as mutual consent. Jerry. Headed. Daka is beaten. But again, it's a foul. A high boot there by Martin Daka. Playing in the stadium named after his father-in-law. <laughs> Interesting indeed and uh, very, very motiv motivational to a larger extent. And Martin Dark, I think this afternoon he's been uh, incredibly well. They are in the middle of the park, of course, alongside uh, uh, Siloni Jero, his midfield partner. I think they've uh, torn apart uh, Lusaka uh, Tigers in the middle of the park. Lusaka Tigers in the middle of the park, they haven't done anything that can be, uh, uh, that somebody can ride home about. I think. Um, Today, they played a very disjointed uh, uh, football. They haven't come to the party. They've played a game that literally has no system, Musonda. Daka, Zulu, Nguenya lost concentration. Could lose concentration because my watch says it's full time. And so, probably already dreaming of the winning bonus. And uh, <laughs> places he's going to visit, or maybe <laughs> dreaming of uh, a shopping spree because last weekend they didn't win, they were beaten by Matero United away in Lusaka, and so they'll be getting their full bonus. So, forgive Tekin Wenya for switching off there again. William Chivale just trying to slow down the tempo by holding on to the ball unnecessarily and Remy Tembo there the former Tete de Chingale player, player sorry in Mozambique Ben Chengo coming on for the scorer Idris Mbombo gets a two thumbs up and a pat on the head from Muhammad Fati and of course Bauchi Keeper William Chivale will take his time, he's beckoning to his players to move. He's played the full 90 minutes and we'll be waiting to see how many minutes will be added on as Warriors attack. Dick Nguenya, no. The Godfrey Nguenya, the younger of the Nguenya brothers, the number 13. It's offside again. So Ben Chengo played in Mozambique groomed by Livingstone Pirates. What can he do in this day? And that's the, the final whistle. No added time, very surprisingly, by uh, Mr. Mutumba. And Ben Chengo didn't touch, <laughs> didn't, make it, didn't touch the ball. And we were about to start talking about him, that what difference could he make? Absolutely. Well, the only difference that he made was to come on. Absolutely. Without touching the and ball. And that's the goal again, pinpoint header by the Congolese forward. That's Idris Mbombo. Kaba Warriors go back to the top of Division 1 South. They have beaten the x while leaders, Lusaka Tigers, by one goal to zero. That goal coming off the head of Idris Mbombo on the stroke of halftime. Muhammad Fati shaking hands with uh, Kelvin Kalila, who displeased the majority of Kaba Warriors fans here for repeatedly kneeling throughout the game. And I know that... Uh, his opposite number, the assistant coach for Cabo Warriors, who will be passing behind our backs. We, I wish we could have talked talk to him. Chin Chin Tukam Kwamba is smiling. I wish we could have talked to him just to find out what had happened yesterday. Chintu, very quickly join us. Join us not about yesterday, but about today. What we want, for, it's about today, Chintu. Very quickly before we get down to um, Tim Zulu, we saw the assistant coach Chintu over. Um, Lusaka Tigers, he was kneeling and praying and the home fans were not happy about it. You are a prayer warrior, Shintu Kampamba. When we won the Africa Cup of Nations in 2012, we saw you kneeling and praying. Is there anything wrong that was done by your opposite number, Kelvin Kalila, in kneeling down and supplicating, offering his petitions to God when the match was on? Can that be attributed to Juju? Is it something that you can say is not good enough, Chintu? Uh, thank you very much, because uh, I'm one of the people who do not believe in Juju. If he was praying to God, which is good, and uh, on the day, uh, a better team uh, got the points, and uh, uh, we just we just believe in God that uh, the team was doing well, and uh, 
hopefully uh, Tigers also does well in the next coming games. Uh, today has been our day and uh, we thank God that he's given us the victory and uh, the players have played very well. And going forward, uh, we just want to thank you, the fans, uh, the people came to support the team and uh, we on the right track at the moment, but we have to work hard as it is, it's not easy. All the, each and every game that we play is going to be tough. Everyone is coming on us. So we just have to stay focused and humble. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Shintu. And we wish you all the best as Cabo Warriors as you aim to return to the Super Division. Very, thank you very much and God bless you. Continue to spread the word of God on the pitch. That was the Cabo Warriors assistant coach, Chintu Kampamba. He was passing behind us many a time, Ch uh, Chizengu. And we decided to take advantage of his many journeys behind our backs just to get his views on uh, this afternoon's game. That's the, the, the top man, if you like. The as far as this match is concerned, that's uh, Idris Mbombo had so many chances, the Congolese. He could have scored three or four goals here today, but it is his goal that has won Cabo Warriors the match, Chizengu. Your final analysis before we get to Tim on the touchline as he talks to the uh, coaches. Well, a uh, hero of the day, of course, uh, Idris Mbombo. Uh, nothing more can be said about him. But of course, uh, he just needs to work hard, probably learn more to utilize the chances that he tends um, uh, to have. Of course, he had two encounters, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, and he totally missed those uh, uh, chances. But up and above, Kawa Warriors are showing that it's a sign that really wants to get back to the Premier League, um, uh, uh, to the Premier League status. Lusaka Tigers, on the other hand, I think they really have to pull up their socks. They need to play coordinated football. They played a lot of uh, disjointed uh, uh, um, uh, football. It was difficult to tell what formation they were using. Probably they had a, uh, they had a big blow when a forced substitution was made. Their goalkeeper got injured, but of course um, uh, the number two, I think for me, he didn't really di disappoint. He just came at a time when things were a little bit rough for Lusaka Tigers. So Tigers have to improve up front. They need to play coordinated football, utilize the chances also that they tend um, uh, to have. Well, from me, the Google set of Zambian football, Sonda Chibulu and Chizengulu Kama. We now cross over to the touchline where Tim Zulu, the boy from Petauke, deep in the village, is standing by with Idris Mbombo. Right, so it's done and dusted for Kawa Warriors. They've carried the day, they are back on top of the table. And obviously, there are a lot of smiles around the stadium. And you can net fault anything from what has happened here in Kawa. Because so far, Kawa Warriors, they got what they wanted and to be on top of the table. They've beaten the league leaders, the, who are their current league leaders, that's Nusaka Tigers, by a go to new. And by virtue of that, Kawa Warriors are back on top of the table and i'll be talking to the man who is the man of the match of course i did a lot of play this afternoon and he is the winner of the goal for cabo warriors at this afternoon idris how was the game ah game is a chair mushe i don't know if you can get a top and it was there are many to not pushing up to think a winner so i'm gonna punch as a player that has this you have been chosen as our panelist as a man of the match and i'm very much a mushe can call a man of the match but family anga in the hapa kuhione machi ya mene machi hii ni na mvera mushe tuwa wina hii game na mvera mushe family anga hili hapa na nangenesa ya mene go na mvera che mushe maningi Yes, thank you so much and wish you all the very best my man Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you Thank you, Messi Right, so that is a man of the match, Idris Mbombo Of course a lot of life to Cabo Warriors this season and you cannot photo the man because he's a darling of uh, the Cabo crowd. But obviously the coach for Lusaka Tigers is here. Coach, obviously you came in as a, a coach for, you know, standing coach for uh, this man, uh, that is Chanda Mwape. Your few moments, what is your take, the fact that uh, you came in here as a league leaders, but today at the end of 90 minutes you lost it all. Where do you think you lost this game? I think the, the players just didn't react to the moment. The moment was very big. It was always going to be a very tough game. And I think we didn't really get into our usual game. So where do you think, uh, because in the first half we could see that uh, you were not really pushing up the Cavaliers. You were packed on your, your, on your backside. Was that a game plan that probably wanted to get a draw or something? No, not at all. Not at all. Our intention was to get the three points. But I think we had problems on the midfield joining up with the attack. So we were very feeble in attack. There were very few men going up front. Decisions by the referee, sometimes you could see your reaction on the bench that probably the decisions were not going on your favor. Do you think that the referee did not handle this match the right way? Uh, those are small issues. I think he handled it well, well above average. It was, the referee was all right. Going forward, 
you've lost this game. Obviously, you are now going behind Kawi Warriors. So, what are the next? What are the next plans now for Saka Tigers? Uh, that's the reaction I talked about. We didn't react in this game, but I hope that we will react in the next game and the next few games to come, so that we compete again with the people on top. Right, Coach Funa, thank you so much, and of course, wish you a very safe trip as you go back to Lusaka. Right, so that is Coach Akfuna there, who is a standing coach for our coach uh, Chanda Mape, who was not on the bench today for some reason or two. But obviously, at the end of the day, they are going back home with a lot of homework to do. But as they remain back home, Cub Warriors did the business, and they did that business in the first half. And the smiling coach, Mamad Fati, is here with me. Coach, congratulations to you, first of all. Thanks so much. You might have been smiling indeed because uh, you know that you, this game was very, very important indeed and you got the result that you wanted and you are back on top of the table. What does this mean for Cub Warriors? Uh, it means a lot for us. We, uh, we are fighting to come to Premier League next uh, season and the part of our plan to participate on Parker's Cup. So we have to finish uh, first round number one uh, with points. Because goal difference gives us a bit headache, one goal difference every time if we draw or we lose. But uh, it was a crucial game and uh, our plan is to win it by all costs. Uh, we attack uh, the opponent too many times and we manage to break uh, the 18 area too many times. In fact, we miss a lot of chances, but uh, miss is a part of the game. Uh, the most important thing you miss and you score. And we score one goal, uh, despite disallow uh, the goal, the decision for the referee. We, we respect the decision, but uh, and also uh, we should work very hard for the next two games. But so far, so good. Uh, the guys have done the job, and uh, it was uh, most important is when we attack, we also concern about defending. Like this, we don't concede any goals, and uh, everything works well, and we manage to win the game. In the first half, coach, your team was very flat indeed. You could build up from the back, but as you go into the final third, the players were really losing all the, like, losing the tempo. So what was the problem in the first half? Because you are so flat. Uh, I can tell you it's a long season, and uh, we played too many games uh, midweek, and uh, we are pushing ourselves to win every game. So maybe uh, the concern about the, the game, the sensitive of the game, so the player they doesn't want to push themselves too much in the attack. So they decide to play long ball in the opponent side to say, no, OK, let's play in the opponent side. But our strategy is not to play long ball. Immediately we put the ball in the ground and we play our passing game. We manage to control the game. And this is how we manage to make the cross from the flank and we score a fantastic goal from Bombo. At home, coach, it shows that you don't call, don't call, don't score so many goals. But if this season will be scoring just one one goal, two goals. Don't you think that probably you have good strikers, but at the end of the day, you don't really add too many goals apart from probably the other goal, the other team that you've beaten here by goal, three goals to nil. That was Lusaka, uh, that is city of Lusaka. But so far, we've seen that you only score one, two goals. What would be the problem? No, we score too many goals. In fact, some games we have won two one some away and uh, even home. Some games uh, we score 3-0, uh, Zesku Shokers, Lusaka Tigers 3-0, uh, Rifle Men away to 3-1. So it's uh, just the game and uh, also the opponent uh, and the sensitive of the game. We know very well if we draw this game, it will be a problem for us. So we have to win it. So And also when we are attacking, you should be very careful. Huh? If you lose the ball, don't give some gaps to the opponent to score. Uh, to score goals. So this is sometimes we score one goal, but we miss a lot of chances. What we need to have to have more concentration from the front uh, line and the, the midfield. Uh, also, are not shooting too much this game from outside. We have to focus on shooting again. So all these issues we're gonna fix it in the next uh, training session. But uh, right now, uh, the objective, uh, our objective, it was to win the game and to come in the top of the log. And this is what happened. Question, coach, and you're back on top of the table. And I want to believe that uh, you have put the smiles back on Kawi Warriors, the people here. And I feel obviously they give you all the support that you need. And they're going forward, obviously, we can want to wish you all the very best as you'll be planning for the other future matches. No, thanks so much. I do my best with my bench and uh, the players. And uh, the team, at the end of the day, is the teamwork. It's not Mohamed Fatih only. Thanks so much, coach, and all the best. No, thank you. Right, so that is a coach, Muhammad Fatih. He's a smiling coach, he's a very happy coach because he knows that he has put the smiles on the people of Kawe by beating Lusaka Tigers by a go to nil. George.
the business for Cabo Wallace was done in the first 45 minutes and it was done and sealed. And I asked you at halftime that do we see Cabo Wallace coming in and adding more goals, but we never saw any goals? Well, we never saw any goals, but uh, team, you realize that uh, they created a couple of chances at some point. You know, Levi Zulu tried to you know to 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 bring Mike Banda into action, and I produced you know a fierce shot that was brilliant saved by the goalkeeper for you know Lusaka Tigers. I think that was one of the chances. Even Idris himself, what we saw in the first half, whereby he had to round off the goalkeeper, he did just that. But putting the ball at the back of the net was the problem. We would have made it you know uh, two new at some point, but uh, it was never the chance. Chances they had in the second half, but they couldn't bury them. They kept that couple of the chances to win the game by far by better by a better margin in terms of the goal score, uh, go, you know scoreline but uh, it was never the case you can never ask anything better than to see Kawalas back on top of the table well, I'm sure as, uh, Fati, as well as the fans out here are quite happy with what he has brought back, you know, uh, to the team. Ensuring that the team, you know, get the maximum points and, you know, um, uh, 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 go back to the top of the table. So it was a good one for the, for, the, for the fans. I believe they're very much happy about it. And believe you me, it's a very tight contest between the two sides. And uh, at the end of the 90 minutes, it is Kawadias that talks away with maximum points. George, thank you so much. And of course, uh, this is how it happened. The Cabo Warriors are back on top of the table with about 35 uh, points. have beaten uh, their rivals, the closest rivals. We are on top of the table. Before this game, Lazis Lusaka Tigers by one goal to nil, courtesy of uh, Idrisi Mbombo, the Congolese guy there. So if Cabo Warriors back on top of the table, it simply means that the drama still continues. How is Lusaka Tigers going to react in the next match? This is a game that we carried live to you on your channel of choice, live from Godfrey Stalu Stadium, that is on movie television, and you can simply say, keep it tight, keep it rocked only on your channel of choice. My name is Tim Zulu, we'll see you next week, and this next week it will be in, in Kafue, where we have Kafue Celtic versus Livingstone Pilots. You know that these two teams are the teams that are, are first and second on the log standings. It tells you a story. It tells you that it's a top of the view type of a game that will give the viewers everything. It's scintillating, you know, football, not forgetting from the commentary box where Amsonda as well as Shizengu is uh, doing their thing. But in terms of the, on the field of play and looking at the way things are, both teams, they, they re recorded losses at the hands of Matero United. One new uh, Cow Warriors lost. One new a team like uh, you know um, a Matero Tigers lost, and this time around these two teams are meeting. It will be very much interesting because whichever teams walks away with the maximum points tops the table. At the moment, you can say Tigers are topping the table, but there is only one goal difference between the two sides that is separating them. Lusaka Tigers, if you notice the away games are that they played, they've only lost two games away from home. The first game against the opening of the season against uh, Matero United, that's a local derby. That game in week 11, they lost against Livingston Pilots, a 2 1 away in Livingston. Yeah. Now, this is yeah. another game that they're playing away from home. Yeah. Now, look at their record, they've played about seven games, and for the seven games, they've only drawn about four. They've lost two, they've lost one. That record tells you that Lusaka Tigers are not going to be very, very easy to beat for Cow Warriors. Well, obviously, team, they're not going to be an easy, you know, uh, uh, bet for Cow Warriors. Uh, it's obviously. They are going to, to go all for so full throttle to ensure that this particular game becomes an exciting one.